Now entering Nerdist.com. You made it weird. You made it weird. You made it weird. Oh, yeah. You made it weird. You made it weird. You made it weird. Yes, you did. You made it weird. Oh, yeah. You made it weird, oh, yeah. you made it weird you made with it weird. Pete Holmes. You made it weird. What's happening, weirdo? So, so excited that uh, John Mulaney, who was one of the earliest episodes, it was episode 75, he was actually living in New York at the time, uh, and I had to go to New York and record him uh, in our old office. Mulaney is back. Here we are in the mid-300s, and it's incredible. So much has changed in both of our lives. It was so fun to unpack and discuss. So, like I always say, let's get to it as quickly as possible. If you're hearing this and you live in L.A. the day this came out, tomorrow, September 1st, it's going to be me back at Largo for my monthly stand-up show with a lot of wonder, wonderful special guests. I'm really, really looking forward to this. I missed doing my monthly Largo show the whole time we were in New York, and I'm so glad to be coming back. It's going to be a hot one. I hope you guys can join me. I'm really looking forward to that. September 1st, tickets, Largo-LA.com. Hope you can make it. Um, and there's no ad for this, um, but I'm plugging something for Katie, who you hear laughing and, and me talking to from time to time. She wants to let you know about Best Friends Animal Society. They have a fundraiser called Strut Your Mutt on October 22nd in L.A., and they created a team nerdist for it. It is a dog walk and festival featuring photo booths, free dog products, food trucks, and more. You don't even have to own a dog to participate, or you can sign up and do a virtual walk. It's 35 bucks to join our team, or you can donate any amount towards our team as a general donation. All the money goes to homeless animals. That's wonderful. Get into that. All the money goes to homeless animals. So go to Nerdy... What kind of a website is this, Katie? That is ridiculous. It's Nerdist interrupted by a period. So N-E-R-D-I period S-T slash Strut Your Mutt Team to join or donate nerdy.st slash Strut Your Mutt Team to help uh, homeless animals. Guys, what a wonderful cause. Katie, happy to plug that. Guys, let's let's show them some love. Uh, and that's it. That's the only sponsor. There is no sponsor. That's the only ad. Other than hope to see you at Largo on September 1st if you're near L.A. In the meantime, enjoy my wonderful friend, uh, one of my favorite people in the world, John Mulaney, get into it. It's the Mandoons. You know how sorry I am. Uh, <laughs> I please. Can say it a million times. What an opportunity to be a good friend. No, I, 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 it's me, okay. Me you, you do know how sorry. I am. Of course I do. I had a petunia. You're not. You're not sorry. a. You're not a late person. Hey, how are you? We were talking about the last person that was. Uh, by the way, I'm not mad. I really, of course, I'm not mad, but I, I, I do. I did realize I have enough goodwill in the in the bank in the relation. I was like, I can leave at well, nine fifteen saved... when I'm supposed to be there at nine, because I have enough ah. goodwill. <laughs> well, you saved my butt, uh, giving me your place. What the divorce? Oh yeah, that yeah. yeah. Go the divorce. <laughs> I thought you meant when I counseled you through the divorce. <clears throat> We've been quoting you a lot lately, talking about Kay Makuchi just did it uh, yesterday. And we were talking about it. You always come up. The most often quoted John Mulaney quote is, what's it like being single? Do you remember your reply? Uh, no. You get a lot of work done. You do get a lot of work done. <laughs> I think that's interesting. But now I know people who are married and they just like, they get a lot of work done because they just have, uh, what you call them, bad marriages. <laughs> you seen those people? I thought you were going to say good boundaries and they're like, no, oh. no, no, no. <laughs> Just you know, like the the you if you you pass them in the bathroom every morning for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, we pass them in the bathroom on. every morning. Is that why we get hitched to see each other in the bathroom? Oh, for five minutes? I thought you, you know were, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. First thing I thought you were saying you work in an office and you pass these people in the morning for five. I don't understand what I thought you meant. Yeah, I don't know what I. Yeah, that yeah. was very confusing. Well, yeah, I meant the Ally McBeal bathroom but where men and you, women are together. <laughs> <laughs> don't you feel you're a married man because yeah. you, you were episode seventy five. I was a 75. You were about 300 episodes. You asked 74 ago. people you before me. You lived in New me. York. Can you imagine? You how, were here? How long ago it was? Yes. Wow. This podcast has been going. Oh, right. And I saw you in New York you at were, the old office. You were at SNL. No, I had left. Just I, left. I had just left. I was, in a, I was in a lost phase, I remember. You were in a lost phase? Yeah. Because you got out. NBC and pilot got... passed all summer long. Had nothing to do. Didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah. Uh,. And then saw you, and we got on mic, and we hadn't seen each other in months, so we mm -hmm. just started talking like pals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of classic bits. 
So many great bits. Really great bits. Who's on first? You you have, you had a great bit about smoking. It was so funny. Where you like it's not cute anymore. Oh, it's not. The reason no. I know now that, I'm just a guy outside an office building. In, that's it. Yeah. Was yeah, that it? That okay. was it. I'm glad in now five just, years I've not evolved. No, the bit but at it all. was great. Wait, have you do do you do that on stage? No, I. It's funny. This I got to okay. talk you about smoking. You can have smoking. one observation about smoking, and that can be your one. No, anecdote. I, I want to write some stuff about smoking because I will still have cigarettes, and I started when I was 13. Yeah. So I've been smoking for 21 years. Yeah. And I'm like a but smart you, person. Uh, so when people go like, how how would a person do? It's like, well, I'm smart. Yeah. And I've smoked for 21 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. What is it? Uh, I, I just had... Uh, I don't want to let go of uh, the times when it... Because now I feel it. And I, I'm trying to relive the time when I smoked and I didn't feel it. Or relive the time that I smoked and it made me feel better. Wait, you don't feel it now? I'm trying to relive youth. Now is I feel it. Is that what it is? Yeah, well, now I feel it. When I was young, I'd smoke. is exciting. Do you think it's no one tells me what to do? That's one of my theories. Uh, it's a pack of no, no one tells me. Be, well, so, no, well, uh, no, sometimes. But you have that bit about, like, you love sneaking smokes. smokes <laughs> yeah, but my, cool wife, my wife is, like, just, like, mad that I would smoke. She wouldn't. No, I, mean, I understand. She just doesn't want me to smoke. Yeah, it's but not, it, like, a rule. But then isn't part of the thrill to go out. Yes, that's I, the like greatest think, part about being married is having secrets again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think about This Is 40, where Leslie Mann is putting on dish, dish, dishwashing gloves uh -huh. and smoking out the window, and then she sprays perfume all over herself and that is the secret but that's also yeah. like no one including my family is going to tell me not to smoke and as someone who's... yeah part of it is that my dad thought it was so stupid to smoke and he told me a story about kirk douglas that i already repeat this no kirk douglas he goes you know kirk douglas used to carry a cigarette around in his pocket every time he was tempted to smoke he'd take it out and he'd look at it and he'd go who's bigger you or me and he put it back oh, in his pocket. that is a dad story. I was like, okay, dad, I'll be like Kirk Douglas. I just smoke the cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Who's bigger, you or me? Also, did he really every day? Yeah, put, who knows? Give, give me a cigarette for my jacket. <laughs> and then in the middle of a conversation with someone else, he pulls it out and mouths the words, who's bigger, you or me? Puts it back in. <laughs> Rob does is a great quote where he goes, the people be that- Be here now. That he goes, be here now. Yeah, he goes, be here now. <laughs> sit, sit up straight. No, he Breathe goes- deep. Fo Listen to your breath. There- <laughs> <laughs> there he goes there are these people that go like i haven't smoked in nine months three days seven hours and 21 minutes and 14 seconds yeah. he goes these are the people that die from not smoking that's very funny. Isn't that funny yeah he's a funny guy it's like a good bit. i mean he, he's a regular dude he just changed his name to ram Dass. he didn't even change it he didn't his guru changed it oh but he's really like, like back in the day where the movie studio would give you a new name <laughs> they'd be like you're not pete holmes you're like tab <laughs> Tab, 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 tab Beachman. <laughs> I was going to say Moonlight. Tab Moonlight Beachman. Tab Moonlight. A, me, a Beachman production. Yeah, a Beachman production. But I also, you know, I have a dear friend who smokes, and we were talking Name about names. it. Well, I don't want to, actually. Okay. It could, it's, some, it's, it's somebody okay. not in the biz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not then, fair Then game. it would be not fair. <laughs> not yeah. fair game. It'd be funny if you did it, but it would be unfair. <laughs> it would be funny. But, I, you know, I kind of want to... Yeah. I wish I could do it, but it, it's not that interesting. But anyway, we were talking about smoking, and we were like, it's a winnable game. That's like a Tony Robbins thing, too. It's like, we want to control how we feel, right? Of course. And there are these things. You, you, I actually think about you. When I go through stints where I'm not drinking, right. you're like, I come home, and I'll like make, <laughs> uh, if it's like a non-alcoholic drink, or I'll make a tea, some sort of ritual. Yeah. Because unfortunately, we're stuck in these embarrassing... We're, we're, space suits, yeah, we're definitely human We're bodies. stuck in I deserve a treat because the sun went down. Yeah, I don't know why. But I, I feel so frustrated all the time that we're just, if we're hardwired to be like, it's the evening and I made it through the day. Yeah. And this is where ice cream comes in. I know. This is where cocktails come in. Do you know I have a drink often and I don't even want one? And I know you know what I'm talking about because you, you tell me when you smoke, sometimes you'll confess that you had a cigarette and you confess. And you're like, and I didn't even like it. I didn't want it. I and didn't then I want felt it. sick and high after. And yeah. you go, it, felt, it tasted hot. Tasted hot, smelled like ammonia. Yeah. All bad news. But sometimes like, we're stuck in these things that go like, it's time. The winnable game thing is like, there's something you can do. Of you course. can do it. Yeah. You can go and get this thing and smoke it, and it will make you, it'll make you feel different. Yeah. Even if it's bad or not great, what I think you'll it feel will different. Do to, what I think it will do to me is so different than what it does. Yes. I think it will give me like a jolt of creativity and like pep. Yeah. And instead it just makes me feel like uh, I, I don't know what. That's like, a good angle though. Ate a bag of fire. The, <clears throat> the nicotine angle. Nicotine is a stimulant. Yeah. Obviously.
Yeah. And it does go to your brain. Like there's that, that Sherlock episode where he's wearing all the nicotine patches. With uh, cu- Cumberbatch? Then he comes. Yeah. And he's just like, it's hard to keep up. A, it's too Mr. expensive. Mr. All of a Sudden, I call him. He's, no, <laughs> he's nowhere forever. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's everywhere. Mr. All of a well, Sudden. Well, a good British star can do that. Jeremy Renner was a good Mr. All of a Sudden. Jeremy Renner was. Yeah. I never saw Hurt Locker. Yeah, you know, I didn't like it. If, you know, you ever look back at what one best picture and you're like, I haven't seen any of these. Yeah. Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to sit down and watch that? Crash? Yeah. I crash. saw Crash. I saw Crash, too. I felt bad for... Did you think there were message? Do you think there were subtle undertones about race in that movie? <laughs> Isn't it weird that no matter how good what you're making is, in yeah. 10 years, people will be making fun of it? Oh, I was, I, I've been, I was just talking about this. Sarcasm <laughs> is the greatest thing in the world. It's like, it's so funny... And everyone says, like, there's like a quote from Oscar Wilde that sarcasm is the lowest form of wit. And yeah. it is. Yeah. But it's so effective. Yeah. And it wins every time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. could tell me the entire story of your upbringing yeah. and, you know, a day you went to Fenway and caught a ball and met yeah. Wade Boggs. And you could tell me a wonderful tale. Yeah. And at, at the end, if I went, great story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sarcasm win. Sarcasm is like a little pearl handled revolver. Yeah. Where you're just like, you know. I I'm, I used to have a bit. I haven't done it, and I, I just hit my hour, and I didn't do it. So I feel like it's just gone. You know those bits. What? Those bits that just kind have of you go gone away. back out since the yeah I'm doing shows and the stuff. hour airs soon. Yeah, it airs soon. Then yep. you have to go back out. You're going to do the bits that you rejected from the hour. Quite possibly as, as a cushion. It'll come back. Like I'll go searching for it and oh apologize. My God, will I'll you apologize ever? to it. I the first for sets being I on did. The, podcast the first saying, sets I, don't do I did it after my last special aired. I I went through old notebooks from like I almost did like pot of soup. I mean, I'm, I was going like 2006. <laughs> pot of soup. I resurrected a joke from like yeah from them like oh six. I I actually have bits that never make the cut and are always yeah. the bits I do in between specials. Yep, they're always. I have these bits that I will do like at the cellar at midnight or something. Yeah. I don't mean they're like dirty. I just mean like I'm I'm like I, I this is not for the record. You know what the problem is? I think is I have bits and I'm sure you do too that work in a short set but don't work in a long set. Yeah, like they only work if the if part of the fun is you're only doing seven minutes, and this is what you're talking about. Yeah, but if you do it in the middle, you know that's like part of the joke. Is it's like yeah. I had a joke about it actually was on my last hour, but it never did as well uh, in the middle of an hour about electric eels, and I was like, electricity eels? That's just a thing that we accept. Like yeah. someone told you they exist, and you're like, okay, I believe you. It's like finding out a, a seahorse transmit a Wi-Fi signal. That's the bit. Uh huh. Used to be great because it was like this bit that I would do, and I'd get really into it, like really emphatic. Part of the fun was how yes, I know how to do fake exasperation, yeah. Yeah. and that's what I would do. Yeah, but then, but that would be fine in a seven minute set or a late night set or something. But if you did it in an hour, it if you didn't open with it, yeah. Oh, how cute that he's doing this weird thing to open. It didn't work anywhere else. Yeah, because you break the trust that you're having a conversation because suddenly they go, oh, that was a short little joke. Yeah, he just did a little baby bit. But they'll take a few. I've noticed that like you, I can do three short jokes up front, but if I do like five, they yeah. start to be like, get to it. Yeah. yeah get yeah, to yeah. the long story about how you were a child once or whatever. <laughs> whatever it is I do. Make with the stories. Yeah, make with the stories. I know make with mean. the long bits. In my in my last special, I did a bit and it worked, and it's it's about unicorns, and it's actually an old joke. I wrote it about fifteen years ago. <laughs> That's oh, wow. true, and it was about how unicorns shouldn't be called unicorns; they should be called unihorns. It's a very silly joke. I like that. If you open with it, I'm telling you, the the opening joke is important because if you're doing something absurd. I, yes. I know I've already said this, but part of the fun is like, I can't believe this is how he's starting. Yes, out what of all pro- the ways you could start. Like, you're supposed, it's a, it's a benign violation of you're supposed to go out and, and, and kill. Oh my but God. But you go out and you're like, unicorn. And they're this, like, this is unexpected. I want to apologize for the word I'm about to say because I feel kind of gross saying it, but it is genuinely hilarious. George Carlin starts a special mm. by coming out to deafening applause and he goes, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what you don't hear a lot about anymore? Pussy farts. Thank you. <laughs> so, how are we all doing? He just says that and then like starts the set. That's so funny. To like a like cheering crowd at the beacon. That's how he opens. My dad. Uh, my dad, who um, is like strangely like false prude sometimes, like uh-huh. uh, false like uh, not sexually prude, but what, what do I mean? Like uh, I don't like dirty jokes. Is that, right, is that Prete- pr- pretends pr- he's seen less of the world than he has. Exactly. 
<laughs> yeah. Exactly. Pretends he's not from yeah. Winter Hill, Somerville, yeah, and yeah, all this yeah. sort of stuff. Uh, but the fact that my dad saw George Carlin and he loved it, and he told me he was like, Peter, he opened the first thing he said after the applause dies down is he goes, uh, he had three, I can only remember two, so I'll just make up the first one. He goes, fuck George Bush, fuck Lance Armstrong, and fuck Oprah. And the play, it was just like another. <laughs> I, I have a bunch of his albums on my iPod. He has a bit about Lance Armstrong from before Lance Armstrong was uh, busted. Really? Yeah. Just like anti Lance Armstrong? Just like I'm, I'm sick of his yellow bracelets and his no balls and his expressionless <laughs> fucking face. <laughs> it's just like he sussed out there was something wrong with that guy. I think that's so funny. I was one time on the on the Metro North, <laughs> probably right before I got divorced, and I remember right, going looking, to Sleepy Hollow. Going to Sleepy Hollow, looking at the back of a guy's head. And just going like, I fucking hate the back of this guy's head. Right. I didn't see his face. I didn't hear his voice. There was nothing that I could have like rationally been like, I don't like this type of guy. I was just looking at the back of a head. Right. And this is something that these types, uh, George Carlin or whoever it might be, I've been talking a lot in therapy about the shadow side of, of ourselves. Like you can be like- That's what you talk about in therapy? Yeah, sometimes. Wow. <laughs> what do you see? You see a psychoanalyst? I see a talk therapist. A talk therapist, talk, like a Jungian, therapist. or just like a uh, he's somewhat West Freudian. Hollywood. He's, and okay. he, but he's got he. We share Dr. Gary Penn, whose book is available now. We share a lot of the same beliefs. It turns out. Okay. When I first started seeing him, we didn't have a lot of the same beliefs. But then I kind of started finding new things, and then I would tell him about Ram Dass, and he'd be like, uh, "Be here now has been on my shelf this entire time, or whatever wow. it was, or Young, or Freud, or whoever it was." So we kind of like found each other late in the relationship. Oh, that's nice. But I always liked but at least you got to pay for the first three years of it. It was still great. Yeah. But I wasn't I wasn't mining the relationship as deeply as I could have. Yeah. And do you tell him the truth or do you lie and make yourself sound good? Tell him the truth. Do you good? lie? Yeah, I make myself sound good. Yeah. <laughs> I go, oh, I'm feeling weird today because I was doing, I was uh, serving all this soup to homeless people. Uh, well, that's another Dune story where when you were a young man, you wouldn't proceed with therapy until he admitted he wouldn't be listening to you if you hadn't paid him. Yes. That, that, was, that was brave, coked up Dunes. <laughs> He had a wandering eye, this guy. I had a psychiatrist in D.C., and one eye would just kind of Cosby over to the side. And I was like, you, you realize I've been awake for four days. Can you pay attention, please? <laughs> you were in therapy while you were in your, your, your young... My drug coke, phase? Your yep. drug phase. And uh, to his great credit, he made me call the outpatient rehab program from his office. I was like, I'll call when I get home. And he was like... <laughs> call right now wow yeah yeah <clears throat> that's so interesting but he was also planning his retirement throughout all of it he would tell me about florida and getting it ready and stuff yeah i, I love the line in sideways where he was like how is therapy and paul giamatti goes like i spent most of the time helping him with his computer that's really funny i think that's a great joke so i've never seen a therapist i always see md psychiatrists who give you drugs and shit if Isn't need that the difference? be if need be but also i feel like i have a lot of physical symptoms from problems i have so it's always physical what do you mean I don't know. You never feel like, does anxiety cause you shortness of breath, panic, stuff like that? Me? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I think, I don't know. I've found that having an MD to sort of be like, I'm going through all this stuff. This is how I'm feeling. And then they're like, have you, did you drink any water in the past two days? And I'm <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Speaking of your dad talking about George Carlin, I've yeah. been I, I've been listening to a lot of Robin Williams, and I got this great book of photographs that a friend of his made that uh, I did a benefit for at the comedy store, and I got the book for free. What's it called? And I was thinking, why did I include that? I got it for free because um, you were about to. It's play. called Robin Williams. I think a like a visual portrait or something. Okay. I apologize to the wonderful photographer that I am blanking on the title. We will we will edit it in later. <laughs> but I remembered that when he had his special in like two thousand and. Two or 2003, Weapons of Self-Destruction, Yeah, this friend of my mom's was like, we watched Robin Williams the other night. So dirty. And all the adults were disappointed. That he was dirty? And I was like, he's always been dirty, always been you dirty. idiots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Bob Saget. It's people who don't know what stand-up comedy is. <laughs> right, right, right. He was always very, not very dirty, but, you know, if you listen to Live at the He Met. always did act-outs of sexual things, which is what she was talking about. I For still sure. remember that being like, very dirty. Why yeah. did he have to do that? Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, always yeah. done it. Maybe you have no concept of stand-up comedy and no taste. 
And you've changed. Well, that goes back to what my dad said. That's crazy. It's like dad 20 years ago. It, it's, it's when you f- catch your dad slipping into the role of dad. So he starts telling me how much he loves fuck, fuck Oprah, fuck Lance Armstrong and all that stuff. And then he realizes, even though I'm probably at the time 33, he goes like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not supposed to. I always want to tell my dad, like, you're done. Yeah. My you're, dad. Not, you're not, you are my dad, but you don't have to dad me anymore. We were watching some World War II. I'm loose. We were watching some World War II thing, and they used the term foobar, and my dad said, do you know what foobar means? And we were alone uh, in the house, and he leaned close to my ear, and he said, fucked up beyond all recognition. And I was like, no one else is around at all. <laughs> Our youngest s- sibling is, like, 29, <laughs> you can say it. <laughs> and shouldn't that be a relief? Like, I was the one that started swearing in front of my parents, trying to... Well, that's it, I think. It, trying to get them to It's probably very relax. unattractive to see a kid swear. In fact, I know it is. I've seen kids swear, and it's very funny. But it's, you, you realize just how crass it is. So you probably don't... When you see your kids swear, you're like, I'm not going to swear around them because this is just too unattractive. It's really holding up a mirror to the your The way own. little kids say fuck and the way they give the finger. <laughs> their, their little finger. Hand, their pudgy hand their little, little finger, finger comes out with their dirty nail. I don't like the finger. The finger is if I get so the finger, funny. If I get the finger. Flipping people off is so funny to me. <laughs> it is like the dumbest, like most pathetic move. That's what it, I mean. I, and like it's sometimes used very empowering in like 80s movies. It's like, oh, by the way, boss. Yeah. <laughs> and they give the finger. And, and what about this? The listeners can't see it, but yeah, when the, you the mounted. S- the, straighten the fingers as opposed to curl the knuckles. It's like the first and third finger are half mass. Yeah, I think it's trying to make it look like a gun. Well, what is your favorite theory on the finger? Do you know everyone? There's many explanations. Do you know any? I don't know. Fuck you. It just means fuck you. Well, that's boring. <laughs> I don't have a theory. There's a well. There's a lot of theory. Well, they don't know where it came from. Really? But one of them is that that this vein goes directly to your dick. That can't be. That can't be. One. This is my favorite. Was that archers when they would capture an archer, like if a king captured oh, an archer, they'd cut off his deal. They'd cut off the middle finger so he couldn't arch no more. Right. I so like the middle that. finger was like, I can still arch you. I like that. I can get it you. It probably comes from Shakespeare. Yeah, there's yeah, all the weird stuff comes like from. Like someone Shakespeare. like, if I had all fingers but one, I would raise <laughs> it in protest. <laughs> you look in the dictionary, there's always like a quote from like a from Chaucer and that's where it comes from. Uh, you know, um what's funny, you mentioned anxiety. I thought of you I've been having a lot of thoughts about anxiety lately. This is not just for the dunes. I was like smoking more pot. Than yeah, I, I have. tried to this year. Is that right? Make it a thing, and it didn't work. I can't go back. I go back and forth. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this is why the celebrities that smoke pot, like Seth Rogen, are more like down to earth. Like I'm like, it's the pot. Well, look, like, giving your brain a parachute that. at night definitely there's there's a benefit to it. But, but there, there's also I don't agree with. But pot doesn't agree with me. It doesn't agree with you? No, I really thought I could get it to. To, like, get into it? Yeah, I tried. But aren't there, like, a million... See, this is how pod people get you, is they go, like, well, what, are you, what, what strand are you smoking? Because you should be, like, the low THC. I, I smoke a very, it. very cheap uh, shake. Uh, <laughs> shake. That's ba- little brown leaves I buy from a teenager. <laughs> but you could... Did you try... I'm not even trying... I've tried all you, the oils and... All the different yeah, kinds. Yeah, I've tried different kinds. Yeah. The up and the down. Yeah. I don't know. Doesn't agree with me. I understand. But you know what? The, I'm a sensitive little baby. That's what I. That's you don't have I a have lot MD of grit. Psychiatrist, which is why I have low blood pressure. <laughs> you know, I'm late and like I'm like my heart's racing. You know, I'm very physically sensitive to those things. Yeah. So like I can't just get high and go to CVS like my friends. Which is <laughs> who smoke in college? They would smoke bongs and then drive to Safeway. And yeah. Be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do think that comes with practice, mm-hmm. from what I can tell. For sure, but it also comes with your body just agreeing with it. Yeah. Well, when Zach Galifianakis did this podcast, he talked about the grit. He's like, some people can smoke. It was really yeah. funny. He was like, some people have huge, thick fingers, and they're like made of leather, yeah. and their necks never move, and yeah. they smoke, and it's just like, yeah, that guy has a weird grip. Well, some people can't catch diseases. I mean, you know, our bodies take things different ways. You mean like, they're just, they have like a stock to them. I don't know. You could be... You I could, don't mean genetic. You could have sex mean... with someone with a transmittable disease and not get it. Some people don't get it. Some people don't get Some it. Some people don't have the receiving end of that. I think. But what I noticed... This, this is terrible misinformation, if I'm wrong, by the way. Yeah, for sure. Some people... And you shouldn't, you shouldn't smoke. You shouldn't smoke. That's what I want to say. Yeah. But it, anyway, smoking pot, I noticed that like sometimes I get up in the morning and I will try and work on something very deliberately. But that requires getting up 
like an hour or two hours before you have to go anywhere. Yeah. So it's like this little morning time. And when I was smoking pot, I wouldn't do it. I just, I just yeah. I turned my alarm off. Here's why. It wasn't because I woke up and I still felt stoned or anything. It's because pot does wake you up to the fact that like nothing is happening. It's all just kind of an illusion. Work is stupid. And, I didn't and even get that. Debilitating wow. to me because it lowers my anxiety level really oh, low. Oh, right. So what gets me out of the bed, out of the bed. The bed, What yeah. am I, Belky? Yeah. At 8 a.m. when I don't have to leave until 10.30 and I want to, I just want to have that time where I sit at the dining room table and I type, 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 is anxiety. Right. Is sheer fear. It wakes me up. Uh -huh. I literally say, no, nah, I want to keep sleeping. And it goes, ah! and then uh -huh. I go, okay, I'm up. Oh, so are realize, you a failure? Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. So I've been thinking about you and you always call anxiety free cocaine. And I've been doing a lot of free cocaine lately. Yes. I sit on the toilet. But here's the thing, you know, in the morning, so why, why am I telling you that I'm shitting? But it's like I wave to my anxiety. I'm like, there it is. I'm almost glad that it came back because yeah. when I don't have it. And this is this can be lovely, I, you know. It's it, it's kind of like why do we we don't all have to be like these weird high strung, panicked creative types. We can't. Some of us can, you know, have lower anxiety and function. But for yeah. me, I I seem to need it. It was weird. It's weird for me to have had it and not have it as much anymore. It's going away. The like I'm I am only defined by my accomplishments. So I got to do the next thing. Yeah, like that was that was you know. 23 to 32 that was just isn't it like weird i was just thing. talking to kate so i'm going through this is day two of a very high anxiety phase i i, I haven't felt this anxious since high school uh -huh. and i can't really diagnose why it's i don't think it's cir circumstantial i i did take a xanax when i went to a dance party with val and uh -huh. i didn't feel like dancing and i was like i love I, I was like i'm like i love val i gotta take it and it does it helped me dance and loosen up and all that sort of stuff. So I took this thing, and I'm wondering if it's a snapback from yeah, sometimes something like that. Candy, yeah. But here I am, day two, half a Xanax. But you know what? Like Half a little one? Our tolerances change. Yeah, it could be. You know? But I'm freaking out. And then I said to Val this morning, I was like, I realized that I used to feel this way all the time. Oh, yeah. High school, all terrified. the time. And terrified of every booker, of every person who I came into contact with. Yeah. Like, the idea of screwing up anything was so terrifying. And well, that's what was weird, is, and this is a little bit uh, strange to talk about, I suppose, but it's interesting uh, to the different you know, spectrum of where people are in their career, comedians and otherwise, listening to this. I do think that achieving a few things has calmed me down. Uh-huh. Would you agree with that? About you? No, about you. <laughs> yeah, to a degree. Also, I, uh, failure has calmed me down, too. How's that? I, I kind of, uh, I like the worst fear I ever had as a comedian kind of happened. And I was like, oh, okay. What if I guessed wrong? The comeback kid. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, you, the special. It was a little thin. Is that what you're talking about? It's a great special. Oh, you, oh thanks. It's a great That's special. all me up there. I wrote all those. I, Come on. It's great. That's a Gary Shandling joke. Oh. During the, one of his Tonight Show sets, he goes, thank you. I wrote some of these. I know. That's his yeah. first uh, Tonight Show, I, I believe. Know. Crazy. It's so good. Crazy. Hey, he riffed a lot of those lines. I asked him about it when he did it. Uh, yeah, that's where I heard we, it. We were talking yes, about it. That was where I heard yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I'm honored that you listened to that. Um, he was so good in that episode. He's amazing. It's anyway, so funny. Uh, failure, calming you down. You're, you're talking about the, the sitcom. Yeah. Which uh, did not go your way. Didn't go any way. Didn't go any way. A critical what and an uh, commercial failure. And no one saw it coming. I'll tell you from this side and of no the And no parachute. Fence, you know that... Yeah, here's the thing. There, at Comedy there Central, was they no... used to call you the Christ of Comedy. Did I ever tell you that? <laughs> they called you the well, Christ I, of Comedy. Well, I, at age 32, Mulaney came out. So <laughs> uh, it was fulfilled. <laughs> A sprout from the stump of Jesse. Uh, but that, that, that if that show was your death, this is your resurrection. I guess so. Yeah. Just right this on... This podcast right... is my resurrection. <laughs> No. Doing I, some light touring and talking to you. But, wait, wait, you know, I, you know, I'm working on my show. Yeah. I know just how pro wait, Katie and I, while we were waiting for you, I'm not being passive aggressive. We were waiting for you, so we were chatting. We were talking about just a simple decision of like the theme song. 
right? Oh my god! And we're just like, oh, and I was telling Katie, I was I went like, there's so many. Ah, oh my did god. you really? I went through so many. This is why I'm bringing it up because I know a little bit, but you were doing many, many, many episodes. You were in for the long haul. When I came on, yeah, but you still, I did We did eight. 13. I, yeah, I did eight. You still did more than that. That's true. You know, so, and I remember when I came on as the acclaimed role Father Trey, that you, you were saying, like, just not heavy lies the crown. You weren't being, you know, colorful about it, but you were just like, Jesus Christ, everything goes through you. Yeah, I was feeling it then. Yeah. That was a fun week. That was nice to have you there. I, I was feeling it. Then. By the way, this isn't the story of me seeing Haggard Mullaney. You were being a professional. No, I had fun had that week, too. I mean, that's the, the whole thing was exhilarating, even the failure. It yeah. was exhilarating. But it, everything did go through you. So when they settled yeah. on what sounded like a, a remix of Express Yourself. Oh, that, oh that's the thing. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Isn't it? It's so funny that you've never made fun of it before, and you've bum, had that bum, in your back pocket. Bum, 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 to, that's the, that, bum, to me, bum, is the, like... That, to me, is the quintessential thing I want to avoid. What's that? I had a song picked out two years before. I got talked out of it. We then no go way. to... We can't license music. Okay, let's do original composition. We had one I really liked, but then we were going to be on Sunday nights, and it sounded too much like Danny Elfman, like The Simpsons. So we had to get rid of that. I mean, it was just like, go with that song you like. What was the song you like? Um, uh, it's called It Takes Time to Be a Man by... Is it the rapture? Do you mind if I just check yeah play it? Uh, play the part you would have used the for the theme song, if you if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, I'll pull it up while we talk. But classic example of I can be a quest. diplomat and I can be a good producer, and if there's a problem with that song, I'll find a solution as opposed to just you know what else I quote for what I, want. I quote from you all the time. What. I, I don't necessarily follow this advice, but I remember you gave me the advice. You go, it should be a big deal that you're on the call. Do you remember that? Yeah. Because you were telling me about how you regretted being so available. Yeah. Any call. I so, thought that was one of my skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I you think and a I, lot of people You and do. I are golden boys, too, and we're yeah. like, we we're can like, do look, it. Look, look, here's the thing. I know. He, he, <laughs> and I can do comedy. They're going to be so wowed yeah. by what a diplomat I am. Yes. They're, they're going to send me to the United Nations near the East River <laughs> uh, with, with friggin' Dog Hammarskjöld. Yeah. Because I'm so good at dealing with people. They're, and I, oh my gosh, you read about these, uh, these people that have shows and they're difficult. I'll yeah. never be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, uh, you slowly compromise everything. It's, but it's not let a, me say, though, I'm not blaming anyone like that John F. Kennedy quote, uh, success, success has, has a thousand more, yeah, fathers, yeah. but failure's yeah. an orphan. That yeah. show is totally my baby. That was my baby. So <laughs> this song I really liked. Hold on. Oh, interesting. I liked the light piano along with the guitar. What was the problem with this? I'm going to bust some freestyle. They thought it was too slow. One network thought it was too slow. The first networker was that. Really? Yeah. And then you went to the next network and you didn't... Uh... Then I got a, another song by Yola Tango that I loved. Yeah. And then they were just like, look, we're not going to license any music. So why don't you just hit um, sample on a Casio keyboard? <laughs> bum, bum. Yeah. Yeah. I do relate Oof, so many so many decisions. The the golden boy syndrome of being like it's not then enough. This. this is another one. Oh, this is yellow tango. Yeah. This is interesting, Mr. Tough. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting because Katie and I were talking about because we're in the process of deciding what we're going to do for our title thing, and we're like. Part of me is like, who cares? I really like what Togetherness did, for example, where the, the title was just on a wall. You know, it almost looked like it was part right. of the wall. I love what Girls does. It's just a title card and three seconds of a different song every mm -hmm. week. But then I was like, some songs, some shows, Love, I was just watching some Love, and the da -na 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 -na, da -na 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 -na, is another thing to fall in love with, with mm -hmm. the show. It's something that hooks you, yeah. and you catch yourself humming it. And then you're like, oh, I should watch more Love. You know what I mean? Daredevil. Great intro. Bob's Burgers, great intro. Obviously, Sopranos, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Right, never and then, then, you stop, then you stop for a while 
uh, listening to the, you fast forward through the theme song. Yeah. But I always find when a show is wrapping up and it's the last few episodes of a series, you go back. I, I don't fast forward the theme song. Yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. to enjoy this Mad Men theme. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I would fast forward Mad Men too. But another great one. Yeah. You would think of that song. Yeah. And you would watch it. It's all so we're one kind of thing. Weighing, we're going very minimal though. And I was like, that's, that's another choice. I really liked Togetherness and I, it wasn't because of the theme song. But everything is a meeting. Mm-hmm. Talk about that like, Talk about that managing thing. Everything could be a meeting. That's what I'm saying. Or you could be uh, unreachable. That's it. And you go, well, he, want, he said... You know he what Verbiglia said to me? What's that? Speaking of Mad Men, he goes, be the weird boss that people talk about. Uh-huh. Like Don Draper. Yeah. Like, be the weird guy that goes to the movies in the middle of the day. You know, he was really Dick Whitman. Don Draper. Did you know it's one of the greatest regrets of my career that when John Hamm was sitting right where you are... And I was asking him all these Mad Men questions, and he said, people who listen to this podcast already know this story, by the way. He goes, you know I'm not Don Draper. And I wish I had said, I know, you're Dick Whitman. Oh, that's very funny. Can you imagine? Well, you got to host the Emmys. If you hosted the Emmys two years ago, you could have used that joke. That's really good. It would have been great. It would have been weird, you hosting. But though, the, what we're... T- <laughs> Everyone would have been like, this guy has two good CDs, but I don't know what he's doing here. <laughs> He opened with the line joke, the green one. Uh, not recorded anywhere. Really? Unrecorded. Yep. Lime okay. joke. It's my, that's my soup. Yeah. Well, soup is not even said. Never. You've done soup on this podcast. I've, yes, but it's never said on stage. Lemon chill. With anything other than uh, a bunch of disclaimers about how you like it. And I've done it with you. Where were we? You're talking about ba- professional boundaries. This is very interesting. You should not me. be on that call, someone told me, after I was on a, a billion calls. Yeah. Because you said it should be a big deal that you're on the call. And also, you cannot hear notes about John Mulaney when you're John Mulaney. After a while, it wears on you. Yeah, somebody needs to... Or some people can, maybe, but I w- I'm not wired that way. Somebody needs to buffer them. Yeah. Yeah. And they need to speak freely. Yeah. But you can't hear it because you have to then sit in a room and think of funny ideas till two in the morning and then act and be funny. Can I tell you something? We're editing right now, and I'm watching my, my big fat face... <laughs> You're not oh, fat. You're very kind. But I'm you're not at, fat. You ever met fat people? <laughs> just, just being... <laughs> just like... It, it's crazy some of the people we thought were fat when... Like Fat Elvis. Fat Elvis. Fat Elvis looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that he chose to wear tight clothes... Like, tight suits is his own problem, but he looks fine. You wouldn't, that was his You would choice. not walk past him in an airport and go, that's a fat guy. You might notice, like, the hair and the gold sunglasses first. <laughs> Do it on the stage. I will. It's so good. I will. I'll do it on stage. Not Elvis. Yeah, you'd never go that guy. It's fat. also you. Like when I look back at seventeen-year-old Pete, who I thought was this is something Judd and I have talked about. You look back at an old photo. Judd who? Hirsch. <laughs> would look back and would be like, "We thought we were so fat, like some sh- shirtless pic of oh, you." Oh, you did? Yo, for sure. No. And you're like, "Oh man." <laughs> That's like a spry great, yeah. guy. <laughs> Look yeah. at that spry kid. I saw a photo from college. I was like, what a cutie pie. If you had just played it cool, If you John, had known. If you had just played it cool. If instead of da- your dad whispering what that acronym stood for, if he was like, you're a killer. Instead of telling every girl how much you like them immediately. If yeah. If you had just played it slightly Just a cooler. little bit cool. Say every third thing you think of. That's how to get laid in, in high school, I bet. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Say every I, third I'm glad thing. I didn't have sex in high school. I couldn't have dealt with that. Too much stress. I think about it the same way as pot, actually. I couldn't even handle the ACTs, everybody. Uh, I didn't take the ACTs either. But pot, I'm glad I didn't discover until I was 28. And even then, I didn't, I didn't like it. But High it, school was smoking pot and not liking it and not admitting it. And then I discovered other drugs that were uppers. And I was like, oh, this is my jam. That's what you want. <clears throat> but yeah. I guess you're the exception. My concern was if I had discovered any drug when I was in high school, I just would have been like, well, fuck everything. I'm out. Oh, really? I'm just going to do these the rest of my days. Nah, I had to. I had to get good grades. My parents would be mad when I didn't. Interesting. Too much. Too much stress. You should be proud. I told them midway through high school, I I said, you know that I, uh, you know, I work hard because it's more stressful to deal with you when I'm not doing well. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's very practical. Yeah. Yeah. My life is, uh, by by getting A's, my life is less stressful. But if I had had sex in high school. I would have been terrified. But then that whole Pandora's box would have been opened up, and then I would have been like a, a, a sex person. I'd be like, I'm a sex person. I either would have been a sex a person, sex. or I would have been in the depths of pregnancy anxiety at an age. I would have been so scared. Can I? I can't say it enough. The times in my life where I've waited for a woman 
that I was dating and wanted to break up with to get her period. <laughs> and wanted to break up. Yeah. I know that sounds like, I don't know how that sounds. It's not great. It's not a great feeling for me either, but you don't want to... We wanna, have flaws, you and I are You flawed. don't want to break up with a pregnant person. <laughs> No, you 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 kind of can't. That's fully. what I'm saying. Yeah, don't That's what want I'm to. Like, so a, fellas you know, like you, us, <laughs> you don't wait. want to be the guy that breaks up with a pregnant. They're like, ah, oh, I got my period, and you're like, ah, oh, we need to talk. We need to talk. <laughs> we need to talk. <clears throat> we need to talk. You don't smile at my shows. We're done. Take another test before I insult you more. <sighs> I had a girlfriend that I, I, it was a big strike when we went and saw uh, Jim Norton, and he did a 9/11 joke, and. She was like, she said out loud, she practically yelled at him, you can't do that joke if you're not from New York. And I was like, this oh is my, God. my living. Is it who I think it is? Yeah. Yeah. This wow. is my living nightmare. Oh, my God. I was so humiliated. I was the I guy. I should have been a better friend. I was the guy. You were a great friend. No, but I didn't take you out of it. I should have yeah. uh, Nobody could. put over the head in a there, van. There's, friends that, uh, there's girlfriends you get infatuated, and you, you can overlook so many things. I also saw it go wrong, and then you'd go back, and so I was afraid to tell you the truth because I was like, they'll stay together, and then, you know, I can't, I can't be that guy. Yeah, nah. I am proud. I, I will give myself this compliment. Once we broke up, I've never gone back. I just talked about that with Kate McCoochie. I've never been a, like a second thought, like, I should have, baby. Oh, no. oh, really? I made a mistake. Yeah. I've never been that kind of guy. If I break up with you, I've given you an unknown to you three-week trial period. You didn't even know. Like, I realized we needed right. to break up, and then I let it ride for another for, couple for weeks. For three weeks, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want to be hasty. Wow. <laughs> I'm so happy to be retired from that. Yeah. I am retired from girls. I'm so happy. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh. You know, it's interesting. You're you're now married and how are you finding it? I love it. We also we need to talk about that goal. You love it. Yeah, I really love I'm it. I'm not surprised at all. I love uh I just I I love my wife a lot. I like her so much. We have so much fun hanging out. And like uh I don't know. It just feels like an adventure. Making that decision is uh I don't know. You just feel feels good to make that big of a decision, mm. like buying a, a, a fancy car. <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean that to put it down. I was like, no, no, no. It's but nice it's nice to not... pull the trigger on that thing that you were afraid you couldn't handle. It, it just to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Going, going for it. Going yeah. for it. Yeah. When I bought my car, I, I I just got a TV writing job. It was it was not an expensive car, but I, I bought it full out, and that was that was a good feeling. I yes. have to imagine being like, "Baby, I love you," like a 2010 Volkswagen Golf. Yeah, that I got from money for what show did you write for? Outsourced. Outsourced. Yeah. A show that people thought was racist. Bought this car, baby. <laughs> people didn't even watch it. I still have a chip on my shoulder. Some people watch it, and if you a watched lot of it, people watched it, if people watched it and thought it was racist, that's okay. That's the craziest thing about my field show is like. I do have data that a lot of people watched it. Is that right? I mean, not like compared to Hitch. It was a failure. But a million people saw it. You Every know what week? I mean? Yeah. That's incredible. So My talk show was like 700. I've never met one of them. I've never met one of them. you never met a fan of your show? I've never met someone who <laughs> said like, I love that moment when they you do X. I'm revealing too much about this. You don't <clears> do meet I and greets bad. at your stand-up anymore? <laughs> uh, I do do the meet and greets, yeah. And you don't get that? That's where the people are. I'm kidding. I don't do meet and greets. Oh. but uh, That's why you're not getting those comments. Uh, See, you choose to go back to the hotel and get a massage when you could be meeting Vern and Julie. Which Kennedy are and you Michelle. doing right now? <laughs> you should meet those people. I am Dwayne Kennedy. <laughs> I am the conjoined twin of one of the Kennedys that they hid. Uh, <laughs> you should do a meet and greet for seventy five dollars. <laughs> Great comedian, Dwayne Kennedy. Great comedian, Dwayne Kennedy. Chicago comedian. John. But Bo John, Bobby, never... and Ted, and then like a billion duds, and we call them royalty. Anyway, <laughs> a billion duds, like a billion duds. Oh my god! Who I'm... look like we're gonna talk? Who about... look like Kennedys in funhouse mirrors? Those other ones. We're gonna talk about OJ. We just have to. So I love being married, yeah. uh, and I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm knocking wood only because I'm just. I'm not trying to be. I know that life changes and throws a lot at you, but I really love it. Oh, I thought you were gonna say something else. No, I just mean Loving I, I don't want to be the guy right. that's like, I just bought this awesome new goldfish. Yeah. It, it, he and I yeah, are going to yeah, have yeah. a lot of adventures. Sure. And I do the pod in two uh, years, and I'm like, right. yeah, we, we had to. How, uh, did, how does she, we talk about this all the time. Kate and I just did a podcast yesterday, as I already mentioned. And we were talking about the, the look at me, and we have this, I have a need to be 
I like performing. Even in a relationship, I like singing yeah. silly songs and, and Val laughing. Oh, my God. She sings silly songs, too. There's, there's a give and a take. But if you really had to reduce it to a very, very low, not very... Uh, you know, thoughtful explanation of us, there is a factor of like, I am a look at me and she's an I see you. She's like this beautiful, like, she sees everybody. She sees cab drivers. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, you meet her and you're kind of like, I think this person gets me, you know, and I think she does. She's got like kind of a, a, a good gift oh, for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. I feel, I'm wondering how, what is it like with Anna? Do you spend a lot of time seeing her or is it like, does she... Is the scale tipped in her appreciating you? I would say nothing that, wrong with that, by the way, because I'm telling you the scales are tipped that Val sees no, no, me no. more here, than okay. I here, here, here's, spend time seeing her. And everything I'm saying, everything I'm saying, I qualify with. There's also a billion exceptions to all sure. of this. Sure, but and I would to what say I just said. the best thing about us is we we do evolve. We do evolve every week, every month. It feels like I'm learning more about her. She's learning more about me. We're learning more about how our marriage works best. Hmm. We're learning more about what kind of life we really want together versus like, oh, we're just on this roller coaster. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I'll pretend like I have no control over You're it. looking at the data. Uh, and in terms of... and. When I make Anna laugh, it, I, I love it so much. Because she, <laughs> she can be a tough laugh in a great way. Because I just do terrible bits all day long. Uh, and also, I, I do not have low self-esteem. So someone who can kind of call me on my bullshit is also amazing. That's funny. Because I, I, I don't know you guys as a couple as well as maybe people would think. I know I'm certainly closer with you than I am closer with you. Yeah, as, yeah, as a couple. yeah. We never like Dan Levy. I think a yeah, couple friends. Yeah, you weren't around during the courtship. And exactly. Yeah. So now I'm kind of like the weird Tom Arnold cast in the movie Friend in the Hawaiian shirt that comes by and right has a ring of course. And people life. are like, and, and people are like, wow, he's surprisingly good in that true lies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But then I, I pick you up and, and we go to the movies or whatever. But right. like Anna and Valerie, we don't go as couple. No, but we should. We, we certainly. We do. We're, we're, I never see you. We here. certainly could, but it seems to me, from my outside perspective, uh -huh. that you went with. I went with. Val is the best audience you'd ever want. I've never. T uh, that's not true. She'll not die laughing at everything I say. But you know, for the most part, she's just like this ideal audience. Right. She's very light, very silly, constantly bubbling. And and you went with the truth telling, like your bit about. Uh, the airport, like, she's kind of got that, like, protective, strong, decisive, and, like, I can see her being, like... Sure, and that's, that's, a, that's, bit of a, a, that's a joke character. Of course, of course. But, yeah. But she, the, like, that's not a great joke, and you We were dating that. for a couple months, and I showed her a set list, and I was like, should I do this joke? I actually, it was a joke about Elvis. I was like, I have that Elvis <laughs> thing, and she was like, don't do that. Like, it, it wasn't a very good bit, and it was sweaty. And she was like, yeah, don't do that. That's so funny. Yeah. It's just, just a different choice. Because you and I both love ourselves. We have, we, whatever. Well, but what here's the other thought? thing, though, is Anna and I are also like a comedy duo. Like, we play off each other and make each other laugh and sing songs about our dog all day long. So sure. it's not like I'm... I didn't mean to say that you don't and, have that Valerie but, side. But we have this like shared comedy duo thing. Get this hair right here. I got to get it. You I've been waiting it? for you to notice it. Oh, you ripped it out. Of, I start bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> My whole wig comes off that I've had for years. I'm so ashamed. Uh, I've dated the woman that so we have fun we have hum way. we have laughs together. Yeah. But comedy, capital C. Yeah. She she this is a sweeping generalization, but she couldn't give a shit about it, which is really? great. Which is great. Oh, that's fun. Which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's two choices. She, d she, I, it. You can put another scoop cliche, of ice cream in the bowl, or you can have a cup of coffee with the, uh, with the ice cream. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't get that analogy at all. I'm saying Val and I sometimes can feel like two scoops of ice cream. It's like sweet ah, on sweet. Right. And you're going, affogato. God damn, affogato. affogato. You have an espresso yeah. with a scoop of ice cream, and you're like, this is the best fucking thing I've ever had. But the espresso doesn't just say, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. It says, like, I'm this other thing that you also love. Also, come home from a thing where I've been talking about the business you and I choose to work in all day long and it, you know, uh, all the kind of uh, bravada that goes along with it. And to go home with someone who does not think that that's the most important thing in the world is great. Yeah, for sure. It's great. Of course. Uh, and it was really, I mean, it was, uh, I didn't realize it, but it was a godsend when I had to, when I had to, when I had to accept that uh, it wasn't the most important thing in the world. Comedy. Yeah. 
That's interesting. When did that come about? Well, we go back now to the failure of, of Mulaney. Mulaney, the series. Yeah, tell me what failure taught you. That's interesting. It, it, it gave you some perspective? It was a death of Are you sorts. kidding? Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> yeah, you it are an you, interviewer. That's it gave right. you perspective. <laughs> uh, so much perspective. I mean, I, it's not like I've sussed it all out. And there's also bad sides to that perspective, you know, because there's things you learn where you go like, I'll never... I'll never trust a guy with, you know, gla- you know, I'll never trust a guy with cufflinks again. N- none of that shit. Uh, if a network here's tells you this, you run away. Here's the thing. It was not Freaks and Geeks. It was not a thing that didn't do well, but everyone loved. People disliked it. Mm-hmm. I, uh, 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 people I respect never said anything about it, which I would assume means they weren't didn't think I nailed it. Uh, it did poorly uh, commercially, and it was uh, hounded in the press like, countdown to cancellation, this show sucks. So it was just in every direction a failure. There was no silver lining. And Even I had to was, just yeah. sit in it. I couldn't delude myself. <laughs> like, yeah, but we're like, on Hulu, we're like, like, I couldn't delude myself in any direction. There was no escape hatch. It was like a hard failure. It was a big kettlebell. <laughs> you got a fast no. Uh, I got a fast no. We were shot out of the sky. Yeah. And there was no two ways about it. Yeah. And I just had to sit in it. There and was no way to delude myself. So just like a lot of death, it gave you, you woke up on the other side of it and you're like, Again, Ram does. He goes, when we survive the thing we didn't think we could survive, yeah. we find ourselves yeah, on the other, the other side. Yeah, that's the other thing is when, the, the whole, when you live in a city and the whole city is making fun of you for two days, you still can stand on your own two feet. You yeah. can still walk down the street. You're still it's breathing. Okay. You're still alive. But luckily you had stand-up to crawl back in bed with. But that was scary. That was uh, terrifying. Oh, well, my God. That? About to face a crowd after that. I remember you said you wanted to open your new special with. I thought it was good. Yep. And I'm pretty sure I advised you not to do that. Everyone did. Uh huh. <laughs> but I, I, I think but I'm that's unique. a classic, like, uh, the, the, that's the classic wrong move. It's like, I'll, I'll let myself off the hook to the audience and wink and be like, Yeah. Uh, I know you didn't like it. Yeah. You know, but it was like, nah, I don't have to do that. Right. I also just. I didn't... also learned I don't have to do that. I, I don't, don't have to, like, diffuse it for people. People, you know, I just didn't think people were thinking about it as much as you were. I well, really of think, of course not. By the way, uh, of course, not. I think your fans, however, separated the two. There you. were a few days where everyone. Uh, you, oh, it was one of those times where, like, you're not paranoid. Everyone is talking about you. Yeah. There was a day or two like that. Yeah, where it's like I wasn't paranoid. Everyone was talking about. Me. <laughs> Imagine if you smoked pot then. Yeah, I know. Would have been the worst. Fucking well, I was like. worse because I was so sleep deprived. I was an insane person. Yeah. Oh my um, god. Oh yeah, I just you know. Do you have a memory of? When I did meltdown, about? and it was just I, I just felt a. Everyone was so nice, but no one's mentioning it, and mm. I called Neil Brennan after, and I was like, Neil, when I walk into a room, is everyone thinking that guy has that show that's failing? And he's like, Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. People are probably thinking, uh, you know, that it's not popping. I remember him saying That's it that so way. It's very sweet. Funny. But he went, yeah. Neil has pulled me out of a few holes myself. Yep. It's great to have that I friend. Birbiglia is another one. Yep. That will just tell you how it is. Yep. It's great. Uh, so so you, you were feeling it. So you just sit in it. Like, there's no, you just have to sit in it mm-hmm. and examine that it sucks. And it is a death. Something you love died. You, oh, my God. I, I, I got a call on a Friday that I wasn't going to work on Monday. And I had spent, you know, a year and a half with Elliot and Marty and Nassim and Seton and Zach, our director, Andy. I mean, it was my whole world. And then, they, and then I had to clean out my office, you know, a couple of days later. Isn't that a weird feeling? It was very weird. When I cleaned out my office from the talk show, yeah. less, less traumatic. We were in between seasons and it was like, you're not coming back. I don't mean to say it was less traumatic, but it was not as shocking as it sounds like for you. Uh-huh. Although it was a shock. Go well, in. mine wasn't shocking either, but it was shocking the actual moment it happened. I understand. Yeah. But going into an office and realizing it was never your office. That was, that, yeah, I was like. It was a rental. Yes. Little Napoleon sitting behind this desk. This was never your desk. It was a rental. That's not your phone. But that to me sounds like a breakthrough. You know what I mean? Like people, I'm not trying to, people with terminal diseases tend to do what you're doing, which is they surrender. 
Like right. you surrendered. Oh, I surrendered. Like, everyone, to I know it. it's TV. It's very different to anybody that's ill or ha- I have family members that are ill. So I'm not trying to be insensitive, but it's it's in the ballpark of something you worked on passing it, uh, away un, and you had yeah, to face yeah. it. Uh, undeniable uh, loss of something. A bad diagnosis. Yes. And also just this uh, uh, anti-climax to two years of work. Mm-hmm. And then I also realized that I didn't like, I loved it, but I didn't, I didn't like doing it. I don't want to work uh, all year round till 4 a.m., to make 22 episodes of a, sh- of a network show. Mm-hmm. I was like, that is, that, uh, that is, I that, guess you could I say, fully th- would have thought my whole life. That's the life I wanted. Interesting. And I had to accept like, you actually don't want that. Interesting. Cause we think of Seinfeld. Of course. We love Seinfeld. Yeah. The story of the soup Nazi going up to the, uh, to the Seinfeld after the episode wraps and Seinfeld smoking a cigar and he asked him to sign his script and he's sitting with Larry and they're laughing. I'm like, that sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. But it's not. But that. they shut the door and never got on the phone. Well, that is what, if you don't mind me saying, that's one of the things you said when I came by to do the show. You said, I, I don't know who my Larry David is per se. Uh, well, I do want to uh, uh, amend that since you said that. I had enormous support from people. So I always, always have to give a billion disclaimers For sure. about this. An amazing showrunner, John Pollock, Dan Levy, Merica Sawyer, Carrie Dornetto, uh, Dan Mintz friends and writers but i had created it alone so no one had been there from day zero to uh d-day yeah you know yeah. except me so that i you realized were looking for a soulmate not i needed someone to go yeah. remember the very first day when they told us we couldn't have a parrot and now they want us to write a parrot in aren't they insane <laughs> you know but like i knew the whole you wanted a bible uh, yeah i didn't have another person that you know knew the whole story yeah yeah yeah. it's interesting when i watched and i did watch the show and and i well, thanks for watching yeah I, I guess that's all i really want to say it wasn't for me uh uh-huh. it wasn't what i hoped but it, i want the compliment it's what i hoped was i wanted it to be about you you told me that yeah. you, you gave me a good note about the show about a year after it was canceled uh <laughs> good timing that, yeah but but i think that is a but also then okay by the way so other things to learn from there's general just writing and production things to learn from it too mm-hmm. um and also uh look you have to disabuse yourself of the idea that anyone knows more than you you know you you just have to go no nah, i think that's the theme song mm. no i think that's this because <laughs> i certainly can be talked out of stuff especially when <clears throat> i'm nervous about acting and i've only slept five hours mm. you can come up to me and go uh it's going to be called mulcaney and I'll be like, oh, that's weird. And like, <laughs> they think it tests well. And I'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess I can wrap my head around that. And that goes back to you and I sharing a delusion where it's like, not only are we going to be really funny or talented or whatever you want to call it, we're also going to be the most likable person and that anyone's ever worked with. Here's the with. thing when something crashes and burns, no one cares that you took the notes. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like people were like, in fairness to John, he, took he was trying to compromise and, and take notes. No one and cares. Make them, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're delivering a product. It has to be good or bad. The show is on the plate. And, it's... and the people that gave you the notes aren't going to be like, hey, we're, we're going to let you keep going because, uh, you know, we were part of some of these decisions. Right. Can you pinpoint a decision that was regrettable? And, I, you know, I'm not even asking this. This isn't a gossip podcast. I You're don't talking know. to someone who has a show. I feel in very good hands with Judd, obviously, so I don't feel... I like... had plans to make the show uh, Stranger. Uh, the whole thing to me, and what I was most proud of, is that we had, like, we had one or two storylines about dating. Mm. I, I did not want to do a show about dating. I wanted to do a show about, like, haunted apartments <laughs> i wanted to have plot lines not about you know uh i date a girl and, and there were two of those mm-hmm. but i didn't want to make a, a relationship sitcom now once you decide that you get in there and you're like so what are some story ideas mm-hmm. and it's like haunted apartment uh let's see yeah you know i was so uh uh, I was so interested in what it wasn't that I think I... You cannot define a show by what it's not. Mm. Here's what we're not going to do. Mm. It's like, all right, well, what are you going to do? So I would have gone weirder. 
Our third episode was written by Dan Mintz, our Halloween episode. It was, I, I loved it. I loved the pace. I loved how weird it was. I loved that ghosts existed in it. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I, I just move that up. Mm-hmm. People always think you don't have to walk them, move it up because mm-hmm. you'll get killed for being generic if you're generic out of the gate. Mm-hmm. And we were killed for being generic. Did, and you did move that up. Isn't that the one with the Well, bat, it had to be because it was Halloween. Oh, right. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's interesting. Did you feel, this sounds like I'm... I would have gone into the crowd. I would have had the camera show the crowd. I would have just done things. I was, in my head, the whole plan was to play with the format, and in the end, I didn't. I mm. just did the format. Mm -hmm. And I'm very reverential to TV, so I was like, I kind of like how this just looks like one of those shows I grew up on. But Mm. But I didn't put new wine in old bottles. I put semi-old wine in old bottles. Hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I would have signaled to the audience earlier I'm trying to do uh, to deconstruct this. Uh, but even as I say that, that might be like a defense mechanism. Like, I, if I could go back, I'd let the audience know I'm cool. Uh, I don't know. But it's fair. But I wanted to do a multicam, and I was glad I did. I ne- I wouldn't have done. A, I wanted a you single to do cam. a multicam. Yeah, I wanted Mulaney. And then and then Carmichael show works great. I know. And it's like right, yeah. Mm. It's right, you can relax. The parents and him. I know what this is. I know right. what's happening. Right. I didn't realize people couldn't relax. The show was my show was so famous in my own head. Well, that's something you told me. Yeah, you thought the characters were so lovable because you loved them. I thought they were famous. Yeah, you thought we they did were... a role reversal in like episode five. Well, that's the no- that's the other note I gave you. Yes, I don't know. You go. You said I don't know who these people are, and they're already swapping personas. Right. But yeah. then what I was going to say about that, because um, Zach yeah. took some pills or something that made him start acting like Nassim. He got off birth control, Zach. Yeah. Zach's character Andre got off birth control. That's right. Yeah. And then so they swapped personas, which is what happened in a lot of sitcoms, but it happened in Seinfeld when he was sleeping in Kramer's apartment. And Elaine became George. And Elaine became George, and he yeah. became Kramer. Right. And that was fun, but that was like season blah, blah, like oh my God, God, seven. Yeah. I thought we were in season 10. That's interesting. I've been living with these characters in my head for so long. But I was wondering if you felt there was a pressure, and I'm not trying to give you an escape hatch. We've already talked about the show, wasn't There's we? There's no escape hatch. Everyone listening knows. Yes. Everyone that's listening probably didn't like it, and they know that. But uh, I'm not trying to, I don't want it to sound like I'm trying to give my good friend a way out, but I am saying, did you feel a pressure to elevate things faster? It's like... Elevate what? Meaning you have to do a character swap in episode seven because the audience isn't going to stick around. The climate is different. A little bit. I get restless. Yeah. I was like, I've seen a billion shows. I can't do... uh, uh, Let's speed it up. Yeah. You know, yes, we're going there. Yes, yes, we're going to... Yes, I take peyote with Elliot Gould. Yes, we go there that fast. Yes. Right. Like, not... You know, I just... I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe having watched too much television growing up. (laughs) I was like, I can't walk through the motions of... Uh, let's get to know these characters. Let's right. Have them go on a couple dates. Right. I just had no interest in that. Uh, yeah. That. Yeah. I couldn't have. I can't tell you to this day. I knew what the NBC version was about. It underwent some changes that I that I was cool with uh, to the Fox version, and I can't tell you the, to this day what the log line of the Fox show is. Interesting. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. I just told you I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm sure there's one on IMDb. It's like a young man stands next to Martin Short and tries to act. <laughs> there was a lot happening. You know, here's my there problem. There was a lot happening. With, but this is also just my taste. That's why I say it wasn't for me. I like shows about one person. Val teases me because I can't – I have a hard time following shows that are about a lot of things. Right, right. So I'm like, now he's talking to the neighbor? That, that's literally, that could have worked, by the way. People do like shows about a lot of people. So it's not like, what were you thinking? Yeah, I thought this eclectic thing would be, you know, oh, my God. I mean, I obviously thought it would work. Yeah. Uh, what was I just about to say? What was I saying right before you said the that? The log line. The log line. Yeah, the NBC thing, I kind of knew what that was. The log line was Mulaney Don't Drink. I quit drink. drinking, and the, yeah, Mulaney Don't Drink was going to be the title of the show. Mulaney Don't Drink. And it was about 
what I really went through in my 20s, which is I actively took steps and made lists to be a quote unquote better person. <laughs> and after okay, a while, like my name is Earl a little bit. A little bit, but yeah. It, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like that. <laughs> but <laughs> it was also about the thing of like, it, like there's no role models, you know. You look up to someone and then you find out they like cheat on their wife, and you're like, oh, you know, like all those things. <laughs> there's just no role models, especially if you don't have religion, or you know, you know what I mean. Do you feel that way? No, no role, role models. No role models. I have a lot of. That's why I read a lot of biographies and stuff, and think about like other people's lives as to how to live yeah and and who who turns you on the most well it's funny i have this picture of bobby kennedy uh <laughs> he's sitting on the stairs uh he's sitting on you know like a stairwell backstage that leads to the yeah. where the stage is he's sitting on a stairwell it's from 1964 he's sitting on the stairs in a suit holding his speech he's about to give a speech at the 64 democratic convention his brother the president was assassinated in 63 he's barely been seen uh the new president lyndon johnson uh hates bobby kennedy doesn't want him to steal his thunder during the convention so he pushes his speech time to a shitty time also has his room bugged to find out if he's talking about him <laughs> and didn't give him a green room hence why bobby kennedy's sitting on this step uh, sitting on the stairs, like the gangway backstage. And he goes out. So the photo is just him sitting there, and I just think about it a lot. Like, you know, you can go through the worst thing in the world, mm. and, and, pe and, and, then you, and then people can still treat you with great unkindness. Mm. But you're, you don't, he didn't evaporate, you know? He just mm -hmm. he sat there, he waited. He's humiliated by the president. His brother died only a few months ago. And he went out and he gave a speech. He got a 19-minute standing ovation when he came out. It's on YouTube. He could not start. 19-minute standing ovation. Really? He could not start, yeah. But I look at that photo and I'm like, wow. you have no idea. You, 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 will, you will not disintegrate. You can survive things. Yeah, yeah. And then that'll be unpleasant, but you will, you will not physically... And you find yeah. strength, of course, where you should find it from people who've done other things. I wouldn't go so yeah. far as to say it's similar, but it's, it serves as a metaphor for sure. No, it's not similar at all, but, but just sort of like, you know, uh, you can take a lot. I'm yeah. not saying I did. I'm just saying yeah. a human being can. But that's what's interesting is going from the show into stand-up, what was that feeling? Was it... They hate me. Was it naked, cold, wet on the beach they on a windy hate, they, day? They hate me. Oh, <laughs> I know it's sold out. I know they're so excited to see me, but they hate me. Oh, my God. I'm going to go out there, and everyone's going to laugh at me about the show. Uh, wow, it's so weird that they bought tickets when they hate me. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was very weird to go back. Did it feel liberating at all? Were you like, I have nothing a, to lose? Cu couple, Eventually. A couple months in. But those first shows, you did the first show. Do you remember where the first show was after the show was canceled? Well, the show was canceled. Four days later, I went to Sacramento Punchline just to work out material. Really? Yeah. And how was that? Uh, I was still crazy, <laughs> so I don't really remember. <laughs> but it wasn't, there was no like, that show wasn't what we thought it would be. No, but one thing I realized was that some people didn't know the show was on. Yeah. You know, yeah, which, yeah, is, yeah. which is very funny. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of my favorite Onion headlines. It says, Just Shoot Me writer assumes everyone watches Just Shoot Me. Yeah. Isn't I mean, funny? like... Isn't that funny? It was like, some people liked my stand-up and didn't know I had the show. Which yeah. It was very funny. Right. A few weeks into uh, I actually to it, I started I to I saw a lot of... This was back when I was like looking at Twitter stuff. I saw a lot of people being like, I don't like the show, but I love the... Like, they were... A lot. Yeah, of, my mom said. But that to I me, love so. John. Like we're my mom said that to me. She's like, "Do you like? Do you realize how fortunate you are that people say that? Yeah, they qualify. It wasn't like, like kill yourself. We hate this guy. There were a couple of those, but yeah, <laughs> the yourself. ones that I saw, because yeah. they would have been people that I followed or saw or, or or followed me or something. I don't know how right, I was right, saying right. this. They were all the people that were like, uh, people. It almost became like a type of religion. You had to be like. I love, it's like The Office. I love The Office, the BBC version. You know, I love right. Mulaney, the stand-up. I love him, the, the person. person. Yeah, you have Not to. that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Checking the AC. Checking the AC. So then you went to the punchline to work out. 
Yeah, that uh, sack punchline. And it was fine. Nobody, were you still not getting that eye contact? Well, okay, so, the, but it was also like production had been shut down, but we weren't officially canceled. So it was a little bit like, is there any world where we come back? Right. You know, I, I, was, I wasn't fully off the hook yet. I was still sleep deprived for two years. I was pretty crazy. No sleep. I just remember walking around Sacramento being like, I don't know if I will be able to make a living doing comedy anymore because people might hate me so much. Wow. But that's very dramatic. Yeah, but if I you're don't, not I don't sleeping, say that for actual dramatic weight. I say that to say I was pretty out of my mind. The reason the Just Shoot Me writer assumes everyone watches Just Shoot Me is because it's preposterous for the human mind to consider that you could be so deep into something yes. that millions and millions and millions of people not only And the real lesson is you we'll shouldn't write till 4 in the morning. Right? You should write from about 10 to 4, and then you should let your staff go. Is that right? Yeah. These I, people are nuts. Yeah. I'll say it. I don't care if their shows are successful. Everyone stays till 2 a.m. I don't know if here. they do. Uh, my friend Pat Walsh. Let's all order dinner. No. Pat is on Two Broke Girls. I hope I'm not speaking out of school. He says they have good hours. And I love hearing you know, some shows. Some shows have good hours. Where they have good hours. I was on shows that had good hours. Uh, Orange is the New Black, 10 to 4. I hear a lot about those people that figure it the fuck out. I always... Also, I, that's... I was never asked to join SNL, but I, I'm the Jesse Klein model. Like, why are you writing all night? Of course. Well, that was fun. I had fun doing that. But yes. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's all, it's like writer machismo. Mm. You know, like, no, my job's hard, right. taxing. Right. You're still proving it to your father. Yeah, you want to come home like a homicide detective. Right. And drop your keys on the table. Keys on table and stare at a Venetian forehead. blind. Yeah. <laughs> Single light bulb. Yeah. Bed on floor. Tough day. A uh, girl got cut on the east side. <laughs> <laughs> really? To, no, we were just breaking stories till two in the morning. You're trying to prove to yourself that it, I well, don't, you're, that you're trying to make it a physically taxing job because you don't do uh, any difficult labor. Because you're just thinking. Yeah, you're thinking and jotting things down and all uh -huh. that. Yeah, I get that. Yep. But what about the the fresh eyes? And it was up to you, and you didn't want to do that. You kept what's that? Like ah, fresh eyes. Let's start tomorrow. What do you mean? You never heard someone say fresh eyes in a writer's room? Yeah, I did all the time. I, yeah. tried, I tried to break people as early as I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there needed to be a big rewrite, I would do it. You know, I'm not going to make everyone sit there. Yeah. I think. I think I did that. My staff might disagree. They might be like, no, you kept us at gunpoint all the time. Yeah. You're insane. I think I let everyone go to a pretty reasonable hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that the Carmichael show, speak, you mentioned it, doesn't, does the other way. Does the, like, we work hard. Oh, like, by the way, when hours. I, I'm just being... I don't know. I'm, just, what I, I'm reason, just being silly when I criticize the way some shows run. Because once you have 22 episodes, you're editing and doing all these things. I understand why people... Stay. The reason I mention that is there's, there's clear... Because we both mentioned that we like that show. And there they are, burning the midnight. So sure. Well, there's many ways to make a good show. For sure. I, I happen to agree. I just happen to not know them. There should be a tender... At a certain point, you're losing your mind. Yeah. Like, we're editing. I find that I can edit for four hours. So you went to... And then, and then I start making bad decisions. Yeah. So punchline, and then you're going to get back into stand-up. I'm trying to get uh, into what I consider to be the very exciting rebirth of Mulaney is not just the comeback kid, but it's Oh Hello. Yeah, no, which is oh, by the, the way, the finest show One ever. year after the thing was canceled, uh, I had a special that was about to come out. I had just done the most fun tour I'd ever had, and we were about to start Oh Hello on Off-Broadway. So one year after the Fox thing blew up, I was like, I'm I'm in the one of the greatest situations I'll ever be in. Mm. You know, I'm about to do this two man show with Kroll in a small West Village theater, and I have a special that I'm so proud of coming out. Like it was a great, mm -hmm. it was a perfect. And one of those things you did for yourself, and one of them came from a friend. I know that's you two's character that you've done together. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm just kind of suggesting that having good friends in a time of and need, they were different. Yeah, it was and two, having creative yeah, friends yeah. that could help you work. And get back on your feet in a very exciting way. And just feel very funny and also feel... It's a cathartic thing, oh, hello, because we can be so... We can make fun of everything. We're not yeah. diplomatic at all. Yeah. Well, it's the funniest thing ever. Uh, thank you. I'm glad I was you so like proud it. of you. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. I, I really find it funny myself. I, you should. Uh, well, that's the Kroll story that I've told a million times. Which What's I that? said, oh, hello was amazing and it could have been bad. And I just meant that as a compliment. Like, you did the work. Oh, but it could have been bad, yeah. You see, you agree. And King Kroll goes, no, it couldn't. Well, it could have been. I mean, our original idea was to come out and do take audience questions for 90 minutes yeah. <laughs> every night. The zero effort Sitting in model. folding chairs. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about those guys is they suck. So part of it's like, <laughs> part of it's like maybe it shouldn't be good. <laughs> 
But, but you then went the we said, other but way. then we said, no, we want people to walk away and go, oh my god, they did so much more with that than I, than I thought they would. That's what that's what I was trying to say with that compliment. No, was I, you I could know. have done ninety minutes of Q and A, and we would have been like, that was oh hello, it would be fine. Yeah. That's that's still good. Yeah, but you guys, people hate effort. That's something I again. Sorry to mention Zach Galifianakis twice, but he's the guy that taught me. He was like, "You people, mentioned Kate Micucci three times. No apology I, on that." Uh, very funny. Uh, very Zach, what humorous. Zach say? He said, "People hate effort." He said, "Try less." He goes, "Try less." Oh yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. When we come out, and we but you look guys like dog did, shit. but you did try our characters, but you tried. caped it. No, but you guys wrote the fuck out of it. A joke every two seconds. Yeah. And, a, and a crowd, like a crowd crusher. In the first ten minutes, you're like, I've already laughed. I love Book of Mormon. But you're like, I've laughed as much as Book of Mormon in like the first half. Oh, that's going on the poster. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, that doesn't come from two but guys. But then we'll put a parenthetical that says you laugh at everything. <laughs> I'm two scoops of ice cream. Yeah, he's And two Val's scoops on the poster cream. with me. Uh well, the thing is, we come out so loose that you don't expect that we'll have a narrative. That's right. We come out, like, whipping Swedish fish at the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And making fun of the venue and making fun of the people. And right. Forgetting our city. lines yeah. and breaking constantly. Right. Uh, and, you know, we look like garbage. But then, and, and it feels like you're about to watch Funny Garbage, and we, we, uh, those characters did write themselves a nice little play. But then next thing you know, you're seeing the play that's making fun of plays... In a way that you've always wanted and to play. Loves plays. And loves oh plays. Lo for God. sure, yeah. You, uh, so oh, fun. Comes to, from to a place. yell on a stage. And to do fake phone calls. Oh, oh my God. So funny, fun. funny to phone yell? calls. And to be in a little black box theater with a monologue that you yell. Yeah. So funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And you doubled down. As, you know, we, we're not Krolls, you and I. Kroll is like the guy who was doing Fabrice and destroying at UCB in like 1991. You know what I mean? Like that natural, silly acting character. Well, you and I, I feel like you were well, doing Kroll's a great actor. You and I, I think, learned how to be professionally silly and acting and floppy. And there you were. In that de character, deeply committed. That I do an oh hello, it's just very easy. But Nick can be that good of an actor in so many different characters. Right. Yeah, I, I hope I didn't. I didn't offend you. You know what no, I'm no, saying. No. no, I can't there's, do that at all. There's Nick's. <laughs> Nick is like another thing. I've always. I can't get out of my own way. But when I play that character in No Hello, that's that's like a total. But that's the joy. Person. Yeah. See, talking about telling the audience that you're cool. The cooler choice is to commit and get really neck deep in the character, and that will actually be less embarrassing than the guy who's doing it winking to the audience. But he keeps yeah. winking, going, yeah. "It's really me, John." Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's brilliant. And now you guys are going on to... But also, I think the, then the other side of it is that it is both of us. As someone said, the show captures our essences, which is that Nick is a baby and I'm an asshole. <laughs> and you finally found a way to be an asshole. Yeah, it's as mean as I really am. Yeah. yeah. It's as mean as I really am. <sighs> Talk about the shadow self. Talk about the, the yelling, a monologue. Yeah. These are the catharsis I mean, that people need. I, I, got, I get to play a bitter... Uh, failure, yeah, and 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 scream about a, a posturing, proud, easily crumbling, yeah, failure. And you know? really mean to Nick, he, to yeah, to Gil, yeah, to Gil, yeah. I know. I really, I can't be mean to Nick. He was a, <laughs> he was a senior when I was a freshman. <laughs> that doesn't go away. And isn't that going to the Broadway? Broadway? Yes, we're going to Broadway, the Lyceum Theater. Uh, start at, preview starts September 23rd. Tremendous. I know, I can't believe it. And do you think, ever catch yourself thinking, like, had the show that you weren't enjoying doing? I understand gratitude and you were happy Miss to do it. Miss it, loved it. But uh, do you ever catch yourself backstage in a gray wig a going, times. I would have missed this? A billion times. It's like the child, I, again, I don't want to say it's, it's like the pain of losing children, but you lost this thing you were working on, really putting your soul into, and it went away. And now you have this other... Let's say dog. I was putting my brain your, your into it. Your dog died, and then, you got, soul and then you got another dog. Oh, interesting. You, you don't know? think you put enough heart into your show? Um, I think I was trying to win all these different battles that weren't, right, w that weren't making of the show. Head stuff. And just like, like administrative. What do you mean? Like I'm trying to win an argument about the graphics mm. when I should just be focusing on... The tone. Making sure that I love every joke of the show. Oh, the joke. Okay. You know I, I mean, the tone. Yeah, the tone, the, the feeling, the vibe, everything. Well, I think that's very interesting. I, was, I just watched Kumail's movie, which is amazing. And I told him I had some notes, but really I was trying to watch it with my heart. I know that sounds very 
uh, whatever you want to say. New yeah, agey, I don't. Tr- I, don't I like, want to be yeah. absorbed by it. I when people go, would you watch this and give notes? I like to go. I have no notes because a lot of times you'll think of a few things just because yeah. you've done writing too. But it's like. No, but I, it, I don't have anything important. When I show you crashing, you'll be in a unique po- p- position where I've every frame. This is something I want to talk to you about. Every frame is a story. I know you know that. Like every oh, shot, shot. Yeah. I go every jacket. I was tired. I yeah. remember what that shirt felt like, yep. or I was hungry. I or was mad. Was. I had to wear that jacket. A lot of the times, I was like, I'm in a fantastic mood, which is why I'm having a hard time not laughing at yep. Lauren or whatever it is. Or I fed them that line, or it took ten takes for me to get that line, or whatever yeah. it was. Or that's not my reaction to that line. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they cut yeah. in another face from yeah. another moment <laughs> from another show. It it can be very very exhausting. And it, it, one of the challenges... Well, it's not for you. You well, made it. That's what I'm saying. Then I can show it to you, and you can just see it and not go, it was cold that day. Right. You can right. just go, oh, Pete is worried that he's going to lose his job in this right. scene. Oh, your co-star had a hard out at five, I can exactly. tell. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sarah Silverman almost, uh, you know, she almost died two weeks before we were shooting. So you, you, you're not looking... When you see Sarah on the show, you're not going to know that we were all like overly concerned that oh, she wow. shouldn't be uh, working too hard. Yeah. She was wonderful, by the way, and yeah. never mentioned I'm con- I'm, I'm going to be self-conscious watching myself on Crashing. Oh, wait. Uh, you know why I know all those lines? No, are you mad? Double fingers? I was kidding. Okay, good. Double middle fingers. There's no, no. one I'd love more. Are you well, kidding? it was your show. That's a good point. <laughs> but uh, there were so many episodes that were completely broken that were never... Never I'm made totally, it. I feel, I feel ridiculous that I even went down this. Bit. You did do double birds too. I know because <laughs> it, I feel no, ridiculous reason, now that I even went down this bit. I love it, and I, I, I would love to do an episode with you. And I'll I know that's it. not I'm what available you were for hire. What was it like doing? Like, well, I want to talk about like you're doing some guest spots. You're doing that like, you know, return yeah, yeah. to acting. Let's get before we get to that. I do want to return say, to or possibly first trying time to act. Yeah. <laughs> Burning yourself. The reason I know your podcast, Episode 75, so well is because I poured through it. And there are scripts. I believe I sent you one where you and I are talking at uh-huh. uh, sweet, sweet Water. Yeah, sweet water. So those scenes, which were real scenes, where you and I would go out. And that's what I love. That's where I try and mine hard. Those are in the show? There's a script written where you and I go out. And you're smoking, oh, so and you sweet. do your smoking monologue, and I feel bad ordering Bloody Marys in front of you, but I'm just like, isn't this what men do? And you're like, we're not men. Oh wow! The whole great. thing is written now. Sweetwater time, great. Pages of Mulaney monologue too. I love it. But that's real stuff. That's how much I want, would love to do stuff with you. Of course. Oh my God, I feel. Uh, the, uh, I'm, I, saying I, for, I, I'm saying I, that I, for the audience, oh, okay. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not for you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> we're we're past that. Yeah, yeah. I, I know you like. Me. I want yeah. people listening to thank know you. that that we're <laughs> that we're good. That we're good. Yeah. But you are difficult people, and then didn't you do? Oh, difficult people was really fun. Yeah. I I only saw a still because I haven't seen it yet. But you're like. <laughs> Well, I saw you tweet I love or something. That. That's I like something Jiminy still. Glick would say. I saw a still. Uh, I don't even know if it's I out yet. Is it out? People. Yeah, yeah. I love difficult people. That's like, I love watching that show. It was so fun. Didn't to you be play? On it looked like you played someone. I play an old timey. I what, play a guy that rides like a penny farthing bicycle and dresses in old timey clothes, <laughs> uh, dates Billy Eichner's character, Billy, and uh, is an old timey and is uh, uh, rich. His family invented, uh, ooh, shit, jelly beans or gummy bears? I feel bad that I'm forgetting. One of them. Yeah, one of them. The, ju- the gummy bean. The gum- maybe gummy bean, no, because my family invented, I can't remember, shit, I feel bad. <laughs> Go back. Uh, but I love that show. That was really fun to be on. But that, it, I liked seeing it, and I will watch it, because I watch, I watch that show, I like that show. I love that show. The idea that you are, you know, getting your foot back in, in, the, in the acting pool. Well, I like playing characters. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, when I said I'm not a crawl, I, you did used to, as we talked about in episode 75, you used to go up and do characters from time to time. From time to time, yeah. You didn't have as much of a... When I put on a bat suit and acted like Batman and walked around silly, that was like a breakthrough for me. Uh, yeah. Like I had finally found something that I was like, oh, I can do a, like, a, like a very muggy, tiptoe, silly thing and Oren will edit around yeah. for me. Yeah, I remember on Best Week good. Ever, we would sometimes have to do impressions. Yeah. And I'd be like... Oh, I can kind of do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't, I can't, I, I, it never went anywhere. But when I auditioned for SNL, I was like, I've actually been practicing impressions That's just because so of this, like, 
little show we all do. Uh, what is the name? I always forget his name. SNL guy does a great impression of you. He would. Uh, it's like Hatem, Tatum, Satem. No. Now this is embarrassing. He just got. He just left the show. Taron Killam. Taron Killam. Tatum. Jesus Tatum. Christ. Tatum. Taron Killam. What is this? A friend of mine? I have to be. Uh, He's I have a to know his name. famous person. Yes, you have to know his name. <laughs> I met him once. He was lovely, and he would do his Mulaney, and it was great. Oh really? I've and never it, it seen. It started with um. It started with that. <sighs> I don't do that. You do that. What, what do I do? I, I don't know. I, I go um like that. I tent my fingers. Well, he's doing you at SNL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Considering yeah. everyone a pitch. does tented hands like considering. This. A, oh, that's what hater does. Yeah, uh, I because <laughs> <clears throat> I say because instead of because because a, oh. a priest yelled at me. He goes. By the way, the word is not because it is because yelled at me when I was because. a kid. Because. And I say it, and I was like, why are you saying because? I'm like, f- that's like a my, priest yelled at me. My dad said upper, he still says upper state New York. And one time oh I was God. on stage and I was like, uh, my wife and I were driving to upper state New York and everyone laughed. Great. Yeah, it sounded like a David Letterman thing. It, yes. Like, have you seen the... Or no, hello. Yeah, have, have you seen the gladiator? We're going to go to upper state New York. Yeah. Exactly. Sor- the, the gladiator. The sorgerdies. Uh, when Speaking of SNL... You went back for the uh, the whatever what episode was it? What was it? An anniversary or an episode? Fortieth anniversary. Fortieth anniversary. And I love this story. If you'll allow me, we were talking about Val and I looked at your house before it was beautiful and renovated. Remember? You you saw it right. You did we went to an through. open house. Right. Yeah. The uh, only my open home house a couple years ago. A couple yeah. years ago, but it wasn't what your home is. Now. No, they redid it. Your yeah. home is In gorgeous. They did a great. Whoever flipped it because it was certainly flipped was flip. by somebody. Yeah. Killed it. It was a, a pancake chef. Came in <laughs> a no, that sounds like a joke, but it's true. It was just a pancake guy from Waverly Diner. Oh, so excellent to double down on that. Double down. No, people laugh, but it, he really was. <laughs> so I. Felt guilty. I, I I felt like not guilty. I felt like I had this like weird. Uh, I, I confessed to you that I looked at your house. I remember being like, I know this is kind of weird, but I looked at that house and I didn't buy it. And, yeah. And then you were like, Oh, that's fine. And then you proceeded to tell stories of working with Steve Martin and Jerry Seinfeld and making them laugh. This was over the meal. Oh, okay. You didn't like follow. And I you, didn't go I, like, oh, you didn't care for my house? Yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, listen to who but I've met. This is how petty I was. Oh. You tell a story of working with Seinfeld, which I'd like you to tell again because I don't remember it. And I'm so jealous, in the good way, the good of jealousy course, that, that we have of, for each other yeah. from time to time. And I'm so jealous of you in that moment. I go, I could have bought your house. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Like I tiptoed around it. And then I was so mad at you that I, I just that. tried to go like, I could have bought your stupid house. Yeah. Tell tell the tell Seinfeld. Well, you could have bought it before they redid it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I could have put a hundred million dollars worth of work in it and never lived there for a year. Yeah, yeah, never be there. Never be there. Um, tell the Seinfeld. You never do. You 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 sit on these good Seinfeld, Steve Martin. There's Obama. Tell tell a Seinfeld story. Well, <laughs> I'm just yelling at you. I, it, it's weird because I. Occasionally, I'll tell a story and stand up about like meeting like Mick Jagger or something. Yeah, but I don't. No, but they're funny. Not funny. But and can I tell you something? They're funny I, to me, but I hate the setup. I hate. I hate. It, I hate the like. Yeah, but this is a, fake humility of like. You know, I used to work this show, so I met these people. Like, yeah. I just want to get to like. Look, I I'm no one, but I met this person. Can you? I don't know if you use this line, but I use this line. This is a Mulaney that I quote constantly from uh-huh. Life. Life Mulaney. Okay. I go. Mick Jagger is rude to people. Uh, not rude. He's uh, to the point. And you said, yeah, are you polite to Siri? Oh, yeah. That, I do is a that joke in the about bed? that now. That's, that was one that of the... we treat our phones like famous people. Call yeah. home. Calling them mobile for a Tom. Not fucking Tom. <laughs> we scream at our that phones. That is... Like we're Elton John. I want to carve you an award because that's a, a premium Kobe beef observation. I'll take an award. <laughs> Take an ECNY horse. <laughs> I'm glad you're using it. Uh, I, so, so this isn't stand up. No, no, no. I'm, but may, I'm asking you to tell the the joke about all those people is they're yeah. they're used to better. Yeah, they go Diet Coke, and one appears in their hand, right. and you would do that too. When I stayed at the Four Seasons for the first time in my life, we uh-huh. decided we were going to go on a nice vacation. We go to the Four Seasons. And Who's that, we? Val and I. Uh-huh. We go to uh, where? Wh- who doesn't matter where? Which Four Seasons? Maui. It does matter. We were Maui. Maui. Yes, that Four matters. Seasons. It's, it's a, re- it's like a one resort. In, yeah, yeah it's like there's a resort. one in Cleveland. I mean, you know. And the service there 
was so amazing. Yeah. Everyone, it's like Disney World for grownups. You know, in the way that in Disney World, everyone's very nice and they want yeah. to chit chat with you and stuff. This is like that, but they have restraint and yeah. like they're, they only They talk. seem to genuinely Care enjoy right. bringing you a cold towel. That's exactly right. Yeah. And the person checking you in is really letting you in on the secret suite that is available. And yeah. like for a little bit more, we yeah. can put you in that. And you're just like, thank you, Taryn. Yeah. It's Taryn. It, it, Tatum, yeah. Tatum. <laughs> and I was picturing a woman that was so stupid. And then you get used to that. Then the next week I was playing Portland and I was in some crummy hotel that I booked myself because I don't stay at Four Seasons. I stay at a regular hotel. Right. And I was, I caught myself, I stopped, but I caught myself wanting to be very rude to the person who oh, refused yeah, to call me when the room was ready. Right. So I'm checking in at nine and they're like, the room's not ready. And I just go, well, can you call me when it's ready? Because I'm going to go get breakfast, but I want to, I'm so tired. Call me when it's ready. And I'll come right back. And she was like, What? We don't, what? We don't do that. Wow. And I was just like, it's a firm line. We're of outside of the Four Seasons, yeah. baby. And that's where. Was yeah. it a minimum security prison? Yeah. <laughs> I honestly think, and I love Portland, it wasn't the chain as much as it was the Portland of it all. It was just like a regular kind of right, right, lady. Right. And it was, it was like, like what are you, you talking why about? Why don't you stay on a bike? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need nice things for? Sleep on the spinach croissant. Uh, okay, you want to hear the Seinfeld story? Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, I got to spend about two afternoons with him working on the uh, audience question portion of the SNL 40th anniversary. Seinfeld did it, uh, took questions from the audience, and uh, pre-plan. I wrote a dra- oh yeah because it was you know it was Sarah Palin, Bob Odenkirk. It was people oh, from the show yeah, asking yeah, I questions. I remember now. Yep. Uh, I had to write a draft just in my house and email it to Jerry Seinfeld, and I wrote like. I said... Uh, Funny I, email address? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I was like, y- you need to not criticize these because you are a very important person in my life. I just said that like in it. I, or so, words That's to that effect. That's so funny. I was like, you're not allowed to be too hard on these because I look up to you very much. Uh, That's great. And then he wrote back, there's some funny stuff here. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be really big, dot, 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 for you. Which I thought was great. That's great. So got to hang out with him uh, for, for a couple afternoons, and it was awesome. Talk man. about being able to say. And what it you was want. the last week my show aired, so oh. my show's final episode was airing, and I got to talk to Jerry Seinfeld about the process of making a show. It was very weird. It was like a movie. It was like it was like who wrote this ending to the journey of me ripping off Seinfeld? Yeah, where I talked to the man himself. And my show's final episode is airing, and it'll never come back. It was yeah. such a such a hilarious bookend. Yeah, that is. That's like in a movie, it would be a little too written. A little too written. Yeah. yeah. And then he meets Seinfeld. Yeah. He did he, Seinfeld. Mulaney was our Seinfeld. Is our Seinfeld? I I am giving you that compliment. You're our guy. You're the oh, guy. Okay. You're For the a second, guy. I thought you meant the show. And I no, no, like, no. You're the guy. Not the show. Insane. Show is terrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's so that very for comedy. Funny. That's so very that for funny. Comedy. I love it. For I love making for fun comedy. of the show. I love it Ask comedy. Nick. I love making fun of the show. <laughs> but you are the guy that makes us all feel like frauds so much of the time. I say, I say it like That's this. Very nice. Of you when you see say. Seinfeld and you see Ray Romano, and I've I've seen, uh, I've seen I opened for Ray once. You watch them and you're like, oh, you, John, do stand up. A lot of us. Uh, I'm a big loud guy doing comedy. You do stand up. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, you do stand up too. I understand. I think I'm a, a great stand up, but I'm saying you do it. You're not embarrassed, and it's natural on you. Some of us oh, can nice. put the pants on, and I wear the pants, and they look fine. But you put the pants on, and you're like, "Oh, those pants were they were tailored for that for that guy." Well, that's and cool. that's what it is. Well, the suit the suit work. The suit and that's helps. why the suit makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, that's why the suit makes sense. Because stand up, but that's very nice. Fits you, to say. you like a nice suit. Whereas that's a very lot of nice like, say. look at the most people starting. Most people start, guys like me, and I love guys like me. In fact, I might even, that might even be my favorite type of comedy. Brian Regans and stuff don't do this, but I like the guys like Louis who go out and go like, uh, I love when Louis started, he was like, there's no, there's no good way to start. I love that line. He's like, I'm sorry. There's, I have no idea how to start. It's never natural. Yeah, I love I've been it. doing this for 30 years. I, I don't know how line. to start. And he's being there and he's talking about the room or whatever. And I know you do that. No, I come out with a joke but about the town. You're like, one I of those guys. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You're Bob Hope backstage going, I'm Bob what's, Hope. what's the mayor's name? Yeah. And you go out, and it's so... That's from Boy, the, I haven't seen so many people since from the, the corruption Simpsons. trial of Mayor That's Mayor from Weber. the Simpsons. Probably. That's from the Simpsons. He goes, Mayor Quimby spends more time in a sand trap 
Anyway. I love that. What's the mayor's name? But you go out and it, and it feels okay for you to just start. And I think that's a really nice compliment because it, it's someone who found what, they, what they're supposed to do. That's really nice. Yeah. I really, really love doing stand-up. Your show is real bad. I love doing stand-up. The show is bad. Yeah, it, didn't work. <laughs> it really didn't work. No, no, no. I it shouldn't, really didn't work. I shouldn't have taken away from the call. I, I, could, I could list the friends who, uh, dear friends of mine, have never commented on it. Yeah. I love it. Is I that real? Uh, so that still happens. What? That people don't talk about it. No, not now. Yeah, because yeah. I no, I just mean at the time. Yeah, people would be like, "How are you?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were we saying? Sorry. Nick and I went to dinner in the middle of the whole catastrophe week, and he was like, "It's so funny that you have a failure. It's so funny that it's you." That's so funny. And I was like, "I do recognize." And Merica Sawyer said, "Some part of you knows this is funny." And I was like, "I do know this is funny." Yeah, I do know this. Never funny. would have forecast it, but. It's perfect. Well, the guy in the suit... The little idiot who wants to be Bob Hope just gets like a, a, a negative billion Rotten Tomato score. You're like yeah. the, just the little idiot who like wants everyone to like him. No one likes him. It sounds like a cosmic joke to me. It was a cosmic joke. Yeah. It was hilarious. And if, it was very funny. And if you know how to look at it... And I called it. it my name. Yeah. And your whole fear in life is that people say Mulaney isn't funny and Mulaney sucks. And that was like headlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actual, actual... Uh, print headlines. Actual print headlines. Written by professionals. A critic said, we're a week away from the premiere of Mulaney, which is like being a week away from getting shot in the face. This is a journalist. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But here you are on the other side. If you zoom out... <laughs> well, I'm at Meltdown doing a podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you zoom out, everything's funny. Oh, I, I, and I knew it was hilarious at the time. But that's what I'm saying. I, I'm not trying to force... We are in the, la we're in the back end here, the spiritual thing, but it's like... That, to me, is enlightenment, is zooming out enough. Yeah. In the Seinfeld writer's room, the picture from the Hubble telescope of the cosmos being like, what the fuck are you upset about? And also a lesson of like, no, it was making the show. Y y you have to enjoy that. Yes. Next time you do it, you have to enjoy it because it will end. Right. Enjoy the whole pro yeah. process. And, and Anna would do that. She'd go like, you have to enjoy this because you never know when it's going to end. And yeah. I would try, but it was hard. Little, uh, little microcosm of, of life. It yes. really is. I'm not yeah. trying to be trite or uh, put a bow what, on What's it. that poem uh, about the destination? The mm. journey's better than the destination? Yeah. Come on, what's uh, that poem? It's know. the best poem. I don't know. What is that poem? It's a quote. It's, um... Shit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up while we talk about other things. Well, I usually do... It's not the journey, it's the destination. But it's a, it's a poem about a city. Uh, shoot. I'm going to look it up. Well... I'm going to, we, we normally end with the speed round, but we have to, we'll, we'll touch on God a little bit, although I, I know you already did it um, before. So, Ithaca, it's called Ithaca, the poem. It's a party poem. Yeah, it's a party school poem. <laughs> I can't believe you got it. Uh, I can't believe you got it. And you didn't even flinch a smile. It's you, about, you it's just about getting it. to Ithaca. <laughs> It's a party school poem. It's about, yeah, I, I ripped it off from my wedding vows on my Ithaca. Uh, yeah. Is it a line you're looking for? No, I'm just looking at the poem because it's beautiful. You just, you just It's just about the journey, not the destination. You're just reading a poem? Now I'm just fully reading a poem on your time after being about an hour late. Uh, <laughs> Let's do the speed round. Sure. Because when it's, sometimes if, I give, if we allow for more time, it, it can be very nice. Sometimes I do the speed round and it's right at the end and yeah. we have to get the fuck out. Now, if you want to take more time, you can, but it's also the speed By round. By the way, are we allowed to swear on this thing? I, I, I love when people ask oh that Oh, my podcast. God. Kate McCucci asked that. God, your Sinbad episode was so good. Oh, thanks, man. I can leave my body. When he goes, uh, uh, two people becoming one, that, that's subtraction. That's the funniest line I've ever heard. That He's talking so about marriage. Two becoming one, that's, that's not good. That's subtraction. That's so... I fucking loved it. That's so funny. Okay, speed round. Uh, the, the frame is what is the greatest lesson and it doesn't have to be super profound it's just kind of like what you're thinking about today great it, but I'll give you the topic okay what's the greatest lesson you've learned about we'll start with an easy one about marriage uh, it's, cor it's very corny and easy but it, it the, uh, listening yeah that's funny because that's, that's the answer we get for acting too a lot which is completely true, by the way. The bad actors aren't listening, and the bad relationships, no one's listening. Yeah. But you kind of alluded to that. 
letting your relationship be a living thing and not coasting. And I, th- and I think it's a real thing with, with men who are, need to work on gender inequality. They're always like, what should I say about it? It's like, you should say nothing. You should listen. Yeah. Don't write on Facebook about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, what a time for listening. How many quiet, unsung Facebook heroes are out there who just, are just, just absorbing? Reading. Just reading. Yeah. Who aren't posting? I don't know. Who are really question. reading all of the... Some parents who just shadow us to see what we're doing. Yeah, and I do, I do a lot of reading. I do zero posting, but that's Listening not... and assuming that the person you're with, married to, dating, together in life with, is changing. And, mm. to recognize, and to not go like, but six years ago, you didn't mind if I was gone for a month. Whatever the situation right, is. Right, right, right. That's interesting. Of course. But it all goes down to unconditional love. If you changed, you would continue to love yourself. But if your partner changes, you're mad. You know what I'm saying? But you shouldn't be, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You need to give the love that you would like to receive. And yes. most people And you need looking... to enjoy the fact that you two will evolve together. That's right. Yeah. You can either be threatened. Pay attention is the biggest lesson of everything. Pay attention. Pay attention. Give your attention. Give the gift of your attention. Not just in relationships, in everything. Yeah. Pay attention. Be there. How do you feel after you smoke? Bad. Pay attention. Pay attention. That's right. How many of us are coasting some sort of zombie cruise control? Or just... Yeah. Pay attention. Pay attention. All right. That can be a good answer for all these. What's the greatest lesson you've learned about stand-up? Uh, Ross Bennett. Uh, I featured at the Stress Factory. I ate shit so bad. I was opening for Justin McKinney. But Justin was late or something. Ross ended up headlining because Justin McKinney couldn't make it. And I really ate it. And this was like, I had been doing okay. And I'd been on Conan and stuff. Like, I thought yeah. I was pretty good. And I, I had these elaborate, clever jokes. And he and Ross Bennett said, you're very funny, but these people have no time for your cleverness. Get to the point. Mm. And so I just moved up the... Pre- I didn't realize that the premise had to be first. <laughs> Why uh, Movies uh, cost $100 million. I would just pay to see $100 million. That used to be buried in the joke. Ah. You know what I mean? Because like, that's the thing that stoked my emotions. Move that first. Yeah. I don't like this. And then you can have tons of clever tags and Muppet Baby references or whatever it is right. you do. You know but I mean? let them in the door. These people let them n- in the door before you serve them dinner. And the other thing was <laughs> uh, featuring for Brian Posehn at Caroline's, there was a couple, they got the bill. I was sitting watching him uh, a headline in one of those booths in the back. They got the bill and they looked at it and it was more than they realized. And they said, oh, and the guy just said, I guess we just won't go out next weekend. And I thought, oh, right, they paid. Stop, like, stop this mumblecore nonsense. They paid. They paid. Yeah. They got a sitter. Yeah. Do a good job. Yeah. Get Pay attention. <laughs> Just do a good job. Yeah, do a good job. I'm trying to force back pay attention. Yeah. What's the greatest lesson you've learned about writing? Ooh, I have bad writing habits. Um, that uh, if you start, you will start. But don't, you can't, not writing is not writing and writing is writing. Butt meets chair sort of thing? Yeah, like you have to, I, I, someone told me that the Coen brothers <clears throat> said when they were writing Big Lebowski that, and someone who's worked with them said like, it can be like watching paint dry, watching them write. They're so like word by word. They had like, a, you know, a 12 hour writing day and all they came up with was that German band that the kidnappers are in. Mm. That was the only detail they came up with. So, so they were like, it was a really good day at the office because they came up with one tiny thing. Wow. And I'm always, and I have very bad writing habits because uh, I want them all to be great. I don't want to sit down and write crap. But you have to write a lot of crap, right? Yeah. yeah. You have to write Love Me Do before you can write the White Album. Thank I think you. Jacqueline Novak said that. Early Beatles, man. Not for me. But they're great. I understand. You can't write... I'm I get pretty it. sure Jacqueline Novak said that. You can't write the White Album until you write Love Me Do. Yeah. That's interesting. I actually remember Dante Nero doing it. He's like, you have to do corny jokes before you can get to good jokes. Like, you have to... He had a joke... You have of, to do jokes that aren't, your, aren't you Yeah. and see how they feel and go, I don't like that. Yeah. I don't, I don't like strippers. Why am I pretending I'm a guy that likes strippers? Yeah. That's great. What's the greatest lesson you've learned about... We didn't really talk about family, so I'll skip family. About showbiz. Um, you got some good... Sh- you're my showbiz friend. You and Berbiglia. It's really fun. Showbiz calls. It's really fun. It's not... It's like... It's, 
it's gross if you're gross. It's fun. It's fun to entertain people. It's uh, gross if you're gross. There are many ways, th- there are many avenues in show business wherein you entertain people and you're given money for it. Yeah. And that is, a, that is the life of kings. Yeah. If you want to be, uh, if you want to get into things that you don't care about, but you think strategically will get picked up or make money and you want to f- feel gross, then it could be gross. Mm-hmm. But it, it's not that bad. It's wonderful. It's like a canvas that's going to take whatever paint you're putting on it, right? I mean, and also the whole thing of like they're not your friends. Yeah, everyone's whining and dining you, but like, but I, I had that. I had then had the you know cancellation, and I still see those people, and I really like them. Right. Well, that that leads in nicely. What is the greatest lesson you've learned about failure? We've talked a lot about it. <clears throat> um, that uh, Eric Hoffer is that his name? He wrote Thoughts on the Nature of Mass Movements. He said, a failure is a stranger unto himself. That's the weirdest part of a failure, is that I didn't know who this guy was that was failing. Hmm. I was like, who is this guy? Hmm. I do well. What's happening? Hmm. This must be a typo. They're writing about a different person. Hmm. So uh, it's almost out of body in the beginning. Hmm. And then uh, it is, yeah, to go... I mean, you know, corny lessons. You kind of find out who some of your friends are. Um, And also, uh, yeah, you know, people, your friends are there. Mm -hmm. Some people are a little afraid of failure, like it's SARS. (laughs) Uh, But I forgive them for that. Like the the week of it, Mm -hmm. people are like, you know, like shake your hand at a distance. Because it's like weird. It's like a stink of failure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So you have a bit of a contagious disease. People go like, if, if that happened to him, mm. could it happen to me? It's like I'm, I'm going to wear one of those paper masks, like a right. Korean woman hiking Runyon. It's like when a healthy person dies. Like, oh, he was jogging yeah. and he died. Is it too redundant to say what's the greatest lesson you've learned about comedy? We talked about, about sta- comedy. stand-up, but like funny things. Comedy, the craft of comedy. Um, Whether it's a show. It's girls, or- yes. This is what I learned about failure and comedy. It's like girls in high school. Uh, they don't, if they don't like you, they don't like you right away and it's over. Mm. It, there are no, you know, when you get, when you're 35, people are like, well, she, he or she is annoying and I, I hate that they, uh, I hate that they love origami, but I'm getting older. I should settle down. In high school, people are just like gross. <laughs> and that is what a comedy audience is like. We like you. We don't like you. And it's fast and there are no appeals. <laughs> there are no appeals in the court of a joke not working. These and things. You cannot argue, uh, you cannot get the Supreme Court to overturn yeah. how the soup joke bombed. These and other things I'll try not to think of before I go on stage. What a terrifying prospect. But you're right. Yeah, it's, it's it's like walk out there, hi, and you're like just like walking into the cafeteria in high school. Yeah, people go, nah, you suck. Yeah, you know that same visceral thing. Yeah, no appeals. Gross. Your TV show comes out, people go, I hate that, and right. it's over. Right, 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 right. No appeals. Right. Move on. Right, right, right. Wow, yikes. We didn't talk much about God, and we don't have to because this was a nice way to stop. But I can't ask what the greatest lesson you've learned about God, even though we haven't talked about it. Ross Bennett, again. Um, Who is Ross Bennett? Ross Bennett. Great comedian. He's at the cellar a lot. Um, uh, now I, I probably know him and I'm an asshole. Uh, that you're, if, if you're living in a state without fear and in total love, you're in heaven. That the idea of the kingdom of heaven is now is, was meant literally. Yeah. And if you're living in a state of fear, guilt, shame, you're in hell. But mm-hmm. heaven can happen here. I think that's the whole point of Jesus, actually, by the way, is that he's always talking about the kingdom of heaven. He says it's now. And it, they won't say low, see here, say, say, see there. Yeah, but the well, he confused people because of low, because that's not a, a word people say a lot. Back then, people were saying a lot of low. Yeah, yeah, low. <laughs> like, it's like Kanye talk. But it is something here and now to be communed with and felt currently. Yes. Not... We, you and I, I think, got a reduced, uh, uh, you know, reduced in the way that you reduce a sauce. The message got reduced into, like, when you die, you go to heaven. A little bit. Uh, and um, 
I said this to you once. People that say, like, I don't believe in anything larger than myself. It's like, New York City's larger than yourself. A cigarette in your jacket. Yeah, I'm bigger than you, Kirk Douglas said. Um, But, like, New York City is bigger than us. Yeah. I kind of, I was at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem uh, 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 doing stand-up. And, uh, I'm kidding. But uh, (laughs) I was like, oh, all these people are here praying to a wall. But they're praying for other people, you know. They're, yeah. they're like putting yeah, those yeah. intentions yeah. in. I was like, yeah. "Oh, it's about other people. Yeah, it's about us taking care of each other. Yeah, but we act like we're sending them up. Right. Like right. I, I, I hope my sister's okay. You say to the sky, and then you take care of your sister. Yeah, that's nice. These but are... I, but I, I, that's not to say I, I, I every day try to figure it out. I, I don't, I don't know. Do you still hold out that you're going to be? You and I are going to be in a Catholic pew with booze breath when we're when we're sixty. When I'm dying, you, I'm going to be screaming for a priest. <laughs> you kidding me? Get over here! I looked at the pornos. I I stole from Lassen's. I stole the pistachios. Uh, I don't want to go to the fire. Because that got into you when you were so young. I knew I had. I knew I had a joke similar to Swartzen's, and I kept doing it for a few more weeks. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go to the fire. Sure, and why not? Get last rites, yo. <laughs> what kind of a funeral do you want? Cremate. What kind of a funeral, though? Just, just toss me into the ocean. No, but I'm you want scary. a service. We need a service for you. Yeah, you probably, you know, I, I think you need a service, yeah. Yeah, speaking you know of, where I want my service to be? Speaking of Swartzen, I want to be lowered down like a marionette. You know that church on St. Mark's? It's a Swartzen bit. Church on St. Mark's? It's like 2nd Avenue. It's like... It's an old church, it's like across from Veselka. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think it might be Unitarian. I've always wanted my funeral there. Really? Yeah, very weird thing, but I've Drawn always, to it. I can just picture it, even though I never have been inside. Wow. Yeah. Like an intuitive funeral calling. I just have, I was like, oh, I know what that'll look like. I also want my funeral at night, because that's showbiz time. I don't want a funeral in the day. That's so funny. I want it at night. The jokes will crack harder. Oh. Uh. And it says, uh, night is more emotional. It's night is the day. Di- well, what are people di- doing with these funerals? Eleven a.m. Where do you have to be? Yeah, I hop. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing it for? Yeah, acupuncture. <laughs> you do want the service too. You want the service for yeah. closure. Yeah, and I want people to say things about me. Yeah, it helps. Well, speaking of Shandling, great funeral. Oh, you went? I I couldn't go, but I I heard it was amazing. I heard it like was amazing. people killed. <clears throat> yeah, people killed. People killed. But like in that beautiful, heartfelt way. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, you know, and there, there are four other people. However, I, I remember telling my mom everything I wanted at my funeral when I was a kid. How upsetting that must have been for her. But uh, I was a kid like that. Yeah, but she was like, you know you won't be there to see it. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. What a bummer. Well, you'll be floating. That's why people love that Tom Sawyer around like thing. Tom Sawyer, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe you will. I'll be haunting uh, my apartment in Greenpoint. <laughs> you picked the wrong place. Yeah. Your house is, is way more beautiful. Yeah. I used to tell I, you know, my mom, I haunt the first apartment I lived in. When I was a kid, I used to tell my mom, if I'm murdered, I don't want them to get the death penalty. Yes, I, I, I felt the same way. Really? Yeah. Isn't that fun? What do I care if they die? I'm dead. <laughs> it's a lengthy appeals process. I'm a dead body in the ground. What do I care? I need revenge? For what? What if they're sorry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I got a good one. This is how we'll close. Okay. Unless you want to talk about God more, but that's up to you. Well, give me your last question. The last question is, can you, because I wasn't asking this when you did it last time. It's the question we end with, is uh, can you think of the time you laughed the hardest? Ooh. Ooh, I wish I'd known uh, some lead up time to that. Uh, the well, you t- could listen to the The podcast. time I laughed the hard. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> I wish that. I do I, listen. I, I don't think you ask that every time. I don't ask it every time. Uh, I've been forgetting lately for many dozens of episodes. The, uh, the, 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 some of the times I laughed the hardest were with Marika Sawyer and Simon Rich writing sketches together, like mm. doubled over, rolling on the floor laughing. Mm. Um, Ass Castle? Uh, Ask Castle Sketch. No, that one was like a lot of rewriting. I'm trying to think. What was one that just came out like uh, wham, bam, bam? We just had a, we had a bunch about pederasts and stuff that we loved. Uh, and they just, we would just laugh oh, and laugh and laugh. Melania. And writing with Hater. That bit you used to do about, <clears throat> you only did it once at Union Hall, about the guy. I think it's probably because it it's, could be 
perceived as offensive. But the guy that's dating a little person or a dwarf or something, but for some reason he doesn't want to tell his friends. Yes, that was a bit I used to do with Simon America. So he skirt really? Yeah, yeah, because we saw this TV show that was like little people, big boyfriends or something. Yeah. And then and skirting the issue. The yeah. joke was not at the expense of the the little people. It was the guy who didn't want to tell his friends. It, look, I, I'll do it. It's not an enlightened joke. But, sure. So I, but whatever. Uh, it was like, yeah, she's really cool. Um, uh, so funny. Size of a volleyball. Uh, <laughs> oh my. No, size god. of a beach ball. Oh my god. Shaped like a beach ball. Um, <laughs> so, and then it was the father meeting the guy. And suspecting him of being a pedophile. That's what it was. was like, but that was always... You son of you sick son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what made me think of it's it. It's an offensive bit. I'm sorry. It is, it is offensive, but you would have these good laughs at offensive jokes. And those, then those Bill point, and I... You know what they are? They're high school basement laughs. The hardest I've laughed recently, we were shooting documentary now, <clears throat> and we were talking about the Manson murders, and Roman Polanski believed for a couple weeks that Bruce Lee had killed everyone at his house because they found a pair of glasses and he thought they were Bruce Lee's because Roman Polanski knew Bruce Lee. Uh huh. And so Bill and I were just doing Bruce Lee committing the Manson murders. Oh and my it's God. them being like, hey, pass the joint. And then like, whoosh. <laughs> and then I'm flying through and, Bruce, and it's Bill really doing it. Bill doing Bruce Lee killing everyone in the Manson house was so... And then it became Roman Polanski trying to track down Bruce Lee uh, but wait, is that first part real? Yes, he thought Bruce Lee did it. Oh my god! And he he was given luminol, and he would spray his friend's cars to see if there was blood in it, you know, because he didn't know who did it. Wow! So then it was the then it was the police giving him more luminol because he's used it up, and it would it, it, Bill would always go, "Now Roman, we're giving you a little more." But Bill doing Bruce Lee committing the Manson For murders was ticket. so funny. For one ticket. For one ticket. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, what else? What's the hardest to laugh at? Don't you think- Todd Glass stuff? Todd yeah. Glass. I was just at Todd's house and and we we cried. That's yeah. one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, that's where I took the Xanax because we dance. It's silly to admit that I'm still can be a little nervous to dance at a Todd Glass party, but half a Xanax, who cares? Uh, so funny. So we play funny. a game called Smallest Smile. I highly recommend it. It's what something Val it? and I made up. When when we smoke pot, we play a game called Smallest Smile, and you, you try to make you try and do smile. the smallest smile. It is. <laughs> oh my god, you spit on your shirt. That's great. I didn't know I had that much funny capability. In one small smile. It was a very good one. Here's the best part of that game: is everyone's going to be pretty good at it. That's great. And everyone will do the first smile a little bit too big, and then realize it's way you you have a, a smaller smile in you. Interesting. Hey, do you want kids? Yeah, for real. I think so. We pulled the goalie. What's that mean? No one knows what that means. No birth control. You're doing this right now? We're not, I'm not, I'm still, uh, you know, we're not. You can cut it out. You can no, 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 I just don't want to be too crass. We're not trying, but we're also welcome to surprises. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I said to Kate, I was like, I'm happy to get that out because I don't want my kid to think we got married because we were pregnant. Oh, of course. I right. want them to know that we were living together in love, considered each other our partners, like life partners. But what's funny about all these precautions you take is your kid will be so fucked up because he's your son anyway uh, that like it, it, all these little things you're doing. Like, like my delusion the fact that, that you he'll sc- listen to this That you podcast. scream at him for spilling his popsicle then walk on stage like Mr. Friendly is going to mess uh, with him so badly anyway. I don't have a temper. Uh, I don't know. It yeah. would be funny. If you no, it's fair. But we're you so, don't have a temper. We're so close that I wanted to. Do, do you? At what? Want kids? Um, Come on, little ladies. I, I, I don't want, I don't, I have this thing where I know that I kind of don't, but I don't like saying it. I don't like getting into the reasons, mm. and it's like, uh, I don't know. Look, None of 10 years ago, 10 kids. years ago, I snorted cocaine that I would buy by getting in a moving car near the Brooklyn waterfront, and... Like so, I I have absolutely no predictions what I'll be like in a few years. I see. Right now, I enjoy my daydream time a little too much to have a kid. I see. And Anna and I's relationship is very important to me, and I like that we're a unit together right now as opposed to the parents of this other thing. Well, it is a scary proposition. Val and I are so happy, and we talk about this. We're like, right. what if we have a kid and we start like all the things that people say, right. the sleep deprivation, all that stuff. Yeah. Paradise lost. Yeah. 
I worry, but I worry the about plus, that. On the plus side, the Earth's population is dangerously low, and we need more white people. That's Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. You selfish bastard. But then when I hear people tell stories, Birbiglia, and when then I, like, you when hold I the baby and you babies, weep. Uh, yeah. can, you, can you bear us just today? He's like, like, when you hold the baby and you look at the baby... And he loved something. And he was like, my, he was like, my mom saw me crying. And I was like, why am I crying? She's like, those are tears of joy. And he was like, I've never, oh, I've wow. never had that. And I was like, I'm putting aside my reason and trying to follow my intuition. And my intuition is always leaned towards. I think I'd be. I'll say this. A, a good I right now am glad I don't have the responsibility. I have never accurately predicted what happens One to me in, in, in a couple of years. Yeah. 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 Sure. I would have never guessed. Maybe Mulaney's kid will be a hit. Mul- yeah, his yeah his uh, his reality show, his <laughs> rehab show about <laughs> being my son will be a hit. Anything else? Uh, I hope your listeners come to the Broadway show, but that's not really what we're doing here. We're not plugging stuff. No, you can plug. No, I don't feel like it. Come to Broadway. Go see oh, on Broadway. It's the best show I've seen in a long time. It's a really really fun show. Everyone loves it. Uh. Oh, do people buy our Jesse James episode? They sh- I don't know if they know about it. <laughs> we did an episode called You Made It Movies where you and I watched the assassination of Jesse James. And they're on iTunes they're as on opposed iTunes. to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, you have to look on iTunes. Yeah. And I believe it's $1.99. Uh, and yeah, I always wondered if people bought that. I don't know. Well, Katie? Some people did. I don't some, have the exact numbers. Right? Every once in a while, we'll get a notice that, that a couple hundred people bought it or whatever. Um. Oh, let me ask you this. I mean, in total, the whole in se- the years that we've done it. A whole separate question. Yeah. I'm dealing with this. When someone says to you, don't tell anyone this, yeah. in your mind, you go, I'm going to tell Val. Because in my head, I like, of course. I'm like, yeah, I won't tell anyone. I'm definitely telling Anna. Of course. Yeah. That's assumed, right? Did you know, remember you had a party and when I came and I said to Anna, I said, does anyone call you Anna Milana? It still hurts my feelings that she didn't laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not funny. <laughs> Firstly, I'm joking. It didn't hurt my feelings, but I really want everyone to call her Anna Milana. Uh, I just think it's a funny nickname. But she gets confused with Anna, so she probably doesn't, uh, doesn't dig it. Well, she's probably a fool. Also, she's not some schmuck audience member at a Pete Holmes show, <laughs> gobbling it up, <laughs> gobbling the fake enthusiasm up. Now I get mean at the end. Uh, you stooge. Well, just know that I thought it was funny. I have a joke about you now. What's that? Giving me be here now. I did? Yeah, you gave me the book. Mm, nice a, cover. A good friend. Blue cover. I was reading it in the... T- <clears throat> the joke is that I realized I was reading it in the Tampa airport. Uh, I was reading a book that wanted me to be more in the Tampa airport than I already was. That's really funny. And every book should be written to take you out of the Tampa airport. That's really funny. Uh, so, and I name check you. I'm honored. I go, my friend Pete, and I do it in quotes. Ah! A few hoots and a few hollers. A few I'll hoots and it. a few hollers. People like to know that people are friends. Yeah, I do. Yep. Let me look. Marlon at my... Brando, Liz Taylor, and Michael Jackson. They hung out. I could have bought your house. You could have bought my house before it got. Oh, flipped. you think OJ's son did it? No, I just know that that's a theory. Okay, you think OJ did it? Um. Yes, I. I was so excited I am for you someone, when all those things. Came someone out. who is obsessed with the case, thinks there was another person there. I have no idea. OJ also, you think there were two people there? OJ and If I Did It said there was another person there. Ron Goldman had defensive wounds that OJ didn't have correspondingly, but that means nothing. I have no idea how the human body heals or doesn't heal from punches, you know what I mean? Oh, like his knuckles were bloody. Yeah, and he knew martial arts, and he had clearly landed some blows that weren't evidenced on OJ. But really? that doesn't mean... I mean, he was also a football player, so maybe he just healed fast. I, I didn't have no know. Idea. By the way, th- you might want to jump forward. Oh, or it could have been um, a T-1000 who was in L.A. at that time. Uh, you might want to jump forward a minute because this is graphic, but I didn't know that there were taunting wounds on Ron Goldman's face. Like, he was being stabbed kind of, like, in the face area as if the killer knew the guy and was fucking with him. Here's the thing. Uh, I remember hearing during the trial as a kid some detail that was suppressed that when Cato and OJ went to McDonald's, they bought Speed. And then I remember knowing that as a kid, and then it was like not in the actual trial. Cato and OJ went and bought Speed together? They, they went to McDonald's. People say Cato was the... Ki- now I'm going to be sued for libel. I heard once, I heard once 
Cato allegedly was the connect for a lot of people for drugs. Okay. Pro- probably There's not true. Sorry, Mr. Kalen. There's a rumor. I'm just stating rumors. Um, yeah. So, uh, so the the uh, agri- the nature of the crime seems like. Because, like, my brother worked on this death penalty case. Wait, were you saying Cato was the other guy? So a, a crime that vicious yeah. is, is also, th- those happen a lot with meth. Oh. So there's a lot of cases where someone will be stabbed a billion times, and the, the normal police line of um, thinking is that it's a crime of passion, ergo someone who knew the victim. Because wh- you, oh. you're enraged. Yeah. That's why you stab him a million times. But with methamphetamine, they were seeing murders where people would go that where overkill would happen yeah when it was a stranger like during a robbery right and because they, they're so my mad. brother worked on this death penalty case where this woman's son was overkilled and they thought the mother must have done it because she's she was about to lose custody and she's crazy and it's a crime of passion but it, right. was, it was it was probably just some people who were robbing the house on meth really yeah so in this world you're saying possibly it wasn't OJ, it was. I'm saying no. Meth. I'm saying OJ could have done two people because he was on meth. Oh, uh, been on the meth. Interesting. Yeah, we're so fascinated with this case as a country. Yeah, I don't know why. It's pretty open and shut. The first, but the first three episodes of that documentary series really let you know why. Amazing, the- and it wasn't just America because, like, the news when we during the trial was like America and race. It was like no, it was specifically Los Angeles and race. Yeah. This notion that everyone came here after World War II thinking it would be better, and it wasn't. Hmm. So bizarre. So you still think OJ? Did it? Yeah. Oh, well, of course he did it. <laughs> I thought you were my one friend that had the wacky theories. No, my theory was, does he miss Nicole? <laughs> does he ever go like, does he ever think about a good time and go like, well, that was fun? Well, you see the girlfriends that he got after. Yeah. So the answer is yes. How good was that rap video? at the end that he makes makes me so sad yeah rap is the last refuge of the murderer (laughs) (laughs) you go there and do novelty rap is oh my god all right let's end on saying not oj um Um, what was your first porn (laughs) i don't know because it was probably on the internet oh really yeah i thought you were old enough for it to be like a magazine under a rock nope Mm. Oh, this kid Louie, his dad had penthouses, but uh, that's a hard one to start with. There's a lot. There's... Oh, and my friend Chris, as a child, his dad was a French chef, and he was a Frenchman, and he loved. Had we? He uh, had a subscription to Playboy. The the son, the boy. Yeah, did. yeah. Because his father was like, "This is nothing to be ashamed of. These are beautiful women." Really? Yeah. So we'd go over there and read Playboys. I used Fr- to ask my French dad chef with a big beard, great to, guy, to buy me Playboys, and he, and he'd be like, "All right," and then my mom would talk him out of it. Wow, and now he's upset about swearing. But that's fake dad. Real dad right. is like, I love George Carlin, and I want you to look at some airbrushed breasts. Um, so, uh, let's see. Last order of business. We don't have any outstanding business, do we? You we, and I? Yeah. I, I haven't, like, forgotten to return a call or... No, it's your birthday coming up. Yeah. No, but I mean, like, we're fine, right? You and I? Yeah. Interpersonally? Because I just, I, I, I check in with friends now and be like, was I, did I not get in touch with you for a while or? No, you, no. Yeah, okay. Everything's good. I, I, You're, yeah, fact, you were in crazy land. When too. you were an hour late or almost an hour late, I, what, one of the reasons I wasn't mad is because we are in such a good place. And one of the reasons we're in such a good place is because you let me stay at your place, which was a huge lifesaver. Oh, did you like it? I loved it. Yeah. I, I don't know if time. I, you know, three months is a long time to be in New York doing a show. And if where you live stinks. Oh, yeah. You're in trouble. Yeah. And Val was alone a lot. Yeah. So being in a central location where she could go to museums and go to movies or whatever, she, whatever the different, she did a million different things. But being right in the middle of the village made a huge difference. Yeah. We used to walk to the water. Great, <sighs> great walk to the water. Great apartment. Great I, mi- apartment. I miss New York. I, th- I will say, everything's fine in your bathroom. What you're doing right now, you're putting your hands above your head. Yeah. You can't do. Especially you. I, I stretched so many times in your bathroom and those glass shelves that you have on the wall. Oh, I hate that. I yeah. just knocked them off. I'm, I, I put they're, those up. They're fine. No, but they're... I, I mean, I didn't damage them. It's so upsetting when you're in a hurry and you knock that, those off. I also, the shower off. head is so low that it hits you like you're... You well, know. Yeah, I was like Bill Murray in Lost in Translation. Yeah. Plus, I left a little drain cover because that thing gets clogged with hair if you just... I, I'm, I was surprised you didn't have one. That's my gift to whoever's staying there now. Thank you so much. And the jacket that I always wear, this jacket, in a uh, what I think it's either a large. I got I got on eBay. I love. Gee, this. I, love I told the, I TJ love the jacket. other day that 
for, apropos of nothing. And I, was, I left that for you. I was like, you told Pete about G Star Raw. Yeah. And then he started wearing it. And I, well, I have this jacket. That's all I have. No, you you wanted to go into G Star Raw in Union Square one day when we were walking around because you said TJ wears these clothes. No, I remember. And, yeah. And when you first get money, you dabble in being like, maybe I'll have a three hundred dollar pair of jeans. Right. And then you wake up, your your sitcom fails, your talk show's canceled, and you become human beings. Right. We think. We hope. Now we'll go do you know, you're doing HBO, I'll do some fucking streaming show and go crazy again. I can't wait to see what Who you cares. Do. I'll tack on a social issue. Yep. Try to make it seem important. Well, I look forward to it. Uh, and thank you. Here's hoping for season two, and here's hoping for a Mulaney down the line. Of what? On our, on our show. Yeah, of course, season two. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm excited to see season one. It's I so funny that you. you're already thinking about season two. I haven't even seen season one. Well, I just meant when we're shooting again, it would be fun to find something to do. Oh, of course. That's what I'm saying. I'll come in. I'll do all my imitations. These are. These are. Also frozen. Also frozen. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Bye, buddy. Say, keep it crispy. Keep it crispy. <laughs> you made it weird. No, you just... Okay. <laughs> no, you, you say you made it weird. Day 15, I'm so crispy, I'm so crispy. My ice game make you haters want to get me. Now leaving Nerdist.com. Nerdist.com. <laughs>